When an orphan grew up in a welfare institution, he was overjoyed. He had originally intended to live a simple life as an ordinary person, but God played a big joke on him. Due to witnessing the entire process of the neighboring girl hunting monsters, Sherlock coincidentally became a member of the girl's team, and a cowardly, useless stick thus opened up a new life for himself. The mysterious Demon Hunting Guild, a team of demon hunters with supernatural abilities, strange functional drinks, red monsters inside their bodies, restless demons, independent heretics. Everything is developing in an uncontrollable direction, and Sherlock finally understands that he cannot be an ordinary person at all. Even trash has dignity, and I don't want to be a trash all the time. Sherlock shouted loudly in his heart, praying for a response from heaven. For the friends who have become writers, the useless boy transforms into a killing machine and eventually becomes the strongest demon hunter. Pushing aside the dense fog, all coincidences are no longer coincidences, as if they are all destined. The gears of fate run over, leaving only the young man to carry the weight and move forward. The heavens remain silent, and the only response to the young man is his own roar. This time, you are all my prey. Chapter 1. Homelessness. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Shaola, I'm sorry to you guys. I'm old and useless. Dean, don't say that. It's not your fault. The boy named Shaola leaned on the old man's shoulder with one hand and kept comforting him. Don't worry, we will take good care of ourselves. In front of a welfare home in Hysher, people from the moving company come and go, constantly shuttling in front of the young man with large and small items in their hands. Looking at the tearful old man beside them, Shirley's expression was somewhat dazed. That's right, Shirley is an orphan. According to the dean, Shirley was abandoned at the entrance of the welfare home when he was three years old. The reason why he knew that Shirley was three years old at that time was because he was holding a hospital's birth certificate, which clearly stated Shirley's date of birth. Apart from that, there was nothing close to him. Even the name, Sherlo, was given by the old dean and social worker, implying that he could be happy in the future. However, in Sherlee's memory, he never truly felt what happiness is. Due to the special nature of his identity, he has never been viewed correctly. When others find out that he is an orphan, they sympathize or sympathize with him, and some even cast contemptuous glances. This is something that these children who grew up in welfare institutions will all experience, but fortunately, the old dean and social workers treat them very well. Although they are not wealthy, at least they have raised these homeless children from humble beginnings, sent them to school, and made them live like individuals. Yes, welfare homes are not wealthy. Since Sherlo recorded the incident, it seems that I have never had any good food in the welfare home, nor any new clothes to wear. Even the stationery used for school was donated by kind-hearted people in society. Although living in poverty, with the efforts of the old dean and social workers, we were able to barely maintain our basic needs. In recent years, social donations have decreased, and welfare institutions are almost unable to guarantee the children's meals. The welfare institution is facing the dilemma of being unable to operate, and the old dean is struggling to maintain the livelihood of the welfare institution out of his own pocket, but ultimately it is not a solution. Finally, last month, a developer took a liking to the land of a welfare home and offered a price that the senior dean could not refuse. After living in a welfare home for 14 years, it's finally time to say goodbye. Sure Lou, I will definitely take care of myself. The most reassuring thing for me is you, said the dean, tears streaming down his face as he tightly grasped Shirley's hand. Don't worry, Dean. I will do it. Looking at the old Dean in front of him, who looked like a father, Sherlock couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness in his heart. Can I take care of myself? Sherlock asked himself in his heart. To be honest, this question is still too difficult for a seventeen-year-old boy to answer. The bus slowly stopped on the side of the road, and even with all kinds of reluctance, the children at the welfare home were about to leave. 
Sherlock picked up his pitiful little luggage and slowly got on the bus with the other children in the welfare home. The bus slowly started, and Sherlock was huddled in his seat. He dared not go to see the scenery outside the bus, the welfare home where he had lived for fourteen years, and even more so, the elderly dean and social workers who raised their forty-plus children. Knowing that they were waving at the bus at this moment, all the children in the bus dared not turn back to look at them. At this moment, a little girl in the car suddenly poked her head out of the window, crying and shouting, Dean! Dean! Her voice was like the alarm of a reservoir opening, instantly infecting all the children in the car, and her sad emotions erupted like a release. One child after another poked their heads out of the window, shouting at the old dean and social workers. Sherlock couldn't control her emotions and cried loudly. She then poked her head out of the window and shouted loudly, I will take care of myself, Dean. 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 A shout echoed through the originally quiet classroom like thunder. Sherlock. Sherlock. A surprised female voice came with a hint of helplessness. Shirley's head instantly became clear, and his gaze gradually became clearer. More than fifty pairs of eyes were staring at Shirley in the classroom, while the middle dot aged woman standing on the podium shook her head helplessly. Yes. I'm sorry, Teacher Lu. I fell asleep. Shirley stood up amidst the scorching gazes of everyone and bent down nervously, apologizing. Did you dream that your dear Dean didn't want you anymore? At this moment, a boy sitting in front joked. Immediately, a burst of laughter erupted in the classroom. Ha 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 Sherlo felt even more embarrassed, blushing and eager to bury his head in his chest. Xing Jiala, homeroom teacher Lu Hong scolded, no one treats you as mute if you don't speak. Xing Jiala, the boy who was laughing at him earlier, curled his mouth angrily and gave a gentle hum and stopped talking. Lu Hong knew that Sher Lu was an orphan and also knew about his experience. She had some sympathy for this boy, so she did not hold him responsible for sleeping in class. Instead, she reluctantly said, sit down. Sher Lu sat down cautiously, still blushing and lowering his head. It has been a week since he left the welfare home, and he didn't have a good time this week. It can even be said that he was quite sad. Because he couldn't find a suitable place to live, and the Heischer No. 1 middle school where he was located was a day school, he was not allowed to stay in the school after school. He also didn't dare to be extravagant enough to stay in hotels, so he had to sleep on a bench in the park for the past week. The early autumn night is not cool, and even a bit stuffy. The old and yellowed school uniform is stuck to his body due to sweating, making it impossible to rest properly. This has led to Sher Lee's mental fatigue these days. He has dozed off countless times since he never slept in class. Fortunately, he had already contacted a very cheap property, and the landlord was a middle-aged woman living alone. According to the landlord, the reason why her house is cheap is because it is located in a remote area and the facilities are also very old, making it impossible to rent it at a high price. But she guarantees that although the house is old, the facilities are complete. And this is already enough for Sher Lu, after all, he has been living in a welfare institution since childhood and does not have the delicacy of a young master. As long as he can meet the most basic living needs, it is enough. To take a step back, it's much better than sleeping on a park bench. Okay, class is over. Goodbye, classmates. Goodbye teacher. With the bell ringing after school, the students in the classroom began to tidy up their textbooks and prepare to go home. Sherlo also packed his backpack and prepared to leave to see his new residence. Sherlo. Suddenly, a boy's voice came through. Sherlo instinctively lifted his head and saw the boy named Xing Jiala leading his group of younger brothers walking towards him in a fierce manner. You're dragging me so hard that I got scolded by the teacher. Xing Jiala walked up to Sher Lu and reached out to grab her hair while speaking in front of her. Xing Jiala didn't have Sher Lego. He tore it hard and Sher Li's entire waist bent down. Oh my! Sher Lu couldn't help but cry out in pain. Isn't it very dragging? 
apologize to me. Xing Jiala tugged at Sher Li's hair, shaking it from side to side, cursing and constantly using insulting words such as, wild seed, garbage. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, Xing Xiao, I'm sorry. Sher Lu grinned in pain, constantly apologizing. That's right, Xing Jiala is a wealthy young master from a privileged family, but his privileged background did not teach him how to respect others. At Haisher No. 1 Middle School, he was a complete bully, surrounded by countless young boys who often took pleasure in bullying their classmates. As an orphan and reticent, Sher Lu became one of the first targets of his bullying. Sher was still apologizing incessantly, but Xing Jiala didn't show any intention of stopping. He kept exerting force while holding Sher Li's hair. With a hiss, Xing Jiala grabbed a handful of Sher Li's hair. After a scream, Sher Lu knelt down on the ground and tightly hugged his head with both hands. Cut, a wild dog, still a toothless wild dog, Xing Jiala gritted his teeth and then spat out a mouthful of thick phlegm on Sher Li's body. The ponies behind were mocking Sher Lu while constantly saying flattery like, Xing Xiao is domineering. And Xing Jiala also walked out of the classroom with his head held high amidst the crowd of horses. At this moment, Sher Lu was really kneeling on the ground like a beaten wild dog, tightly covering his head with both hands, his body trembling uncontrollably, and tears fell uncontrollably. Since his first year of high school, Sher Lu has been bullied and bullied by Xing Jiala and others at Haisher No. 1 Middle School. However, he never dared to resist because he knew that even if he resisted, he would only suffer worse beatings. Moreover, Xing Jiala's family had some background that Sher Lu, a child who grew up in an orphanage, could not afford. Previously, when he was beaten until his nose was blue and his face was swollen, he returned to the welfare home. The old dean and social workers would comfort him and wipe his medicine, and contact the school to demand an apology from the abuser, Sher Lu. However, the school could not control such a small bully as Xing Jiala. Every time, they would use various reasons such as still investigating and notifying the parents of the abuser to evade. After going back and forth, the matter came to an end. Over time, in order to prevent the old dean and social workers from worrying, Sher Lu could only cover up his wounds after being bullied, or simply speak out that he accidentally fell and got injured. He didn't want others to worry about him. How could such clumsy language deceive others, but the school's attitude of inaction also left the old dean helpless, and he could only carefully apply medicine to Sher Lu when he was injured. And now, the person who wiped medicine for Sher Lu is no longer by his side, he can only learn to be strong and patient on his own. Strong, patient. Sher Lu took a deep breath and kept silently reciting in his heart. As he silently recited, Sher Li's body no longer trembled. As her emotions gradually stabilized, Sher Lu felt less pain in her head and immediately wiped away her tears and got up on the ground. Watching his hair corpse quietly lying on the ground pulled down by Xing Jiala, Sher Lu let out a bitter smile, picked up his tattered backpack, hunched his waist, and slowly walked out of the classroom. Due to this episode, Sher Lu barely caught the bus heading to the outskirts of the city. Fortunately, except for the night bus, all the buses in Haishir are free, and the bus that Sher Lu took was the last free bus. If you can save, then save. Buy two buns for dinner with the remaining money, Sher Lu thought. The bus in Chihai City costs two yuan no matter how far it takes, but Shail also wants to save and fill his stomach with just these two yuan. After the welfare home was purchased, the old dean received a considerable amount of property, but years of self-financing management had already left the old dean heavily in debt. After repaying the debt, the old dean distributed all the remaining money to the children of Sher Lu and his group of welfare homes, while he himself had nothing left, which moved Sher Lu and his group quite a bit. I dare not spend this money recklessly, but instead save the remaining money after paying rent and living expenses. It seems that I will have to work and go to school at the same time in the future. Sherlo looked out the window at the city under the sunset and thought wildly. Dongjiao Station has arrived, please disembark passengers in an orderly manner. A sweet but mechanical female voice came, 
and Sherlock followed the few passengers in the car to disembark. Finally, I don't have to sleep on the bench anymore. Sherlock relaxed and stretched out, taking a long breath. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Nightmares. You are listening at novelfull.audio. That's it, your room is on the fourth floor, the last room on the left. The things in the room are a bit old, if there are any unusable or missing things, just come to me. I live in the room on the first floor, next to the stairs. The landlord kindly instructed Sher Lu, by the way, just call me Aunt Liang. Sher Lu looked at the ancient tube-shaped building in front of him and exclaimed, no wonder the rent is so cheap for such a remote and old house. Just now, after getting off at Dongjiao Station, Sher Lu was buying the steamed bun he had been longing for while contacting the landlord, Aunt Liang. Aunt Liang is probably in her forties, wearing a pair of frameless glasses with a waxy yellow face and thick black circles under her eyes that seem like she hasn't rested well. She doesn't look very energetic, and her blue shirt and apron sleeves are haphazardly paired together, appearing a bit shabby under her slightly hunched body. Perhaps it has been too long since there were no tenants, but Aunt Liang was very enthusiastic about Shirley's comfort and warmth. When she found out that Shirley was an orphan and homeless, she was a bit at a loss. She rubbed her hands haphazardly and cautiously said, the rent can be even cheaper. It's not easy for such a young child. Something like that. As she spoke, she pulled Shail through the narrow alley and twisted her way to the five-story tube-shaped building in front of her. In turn. Aunt Liang, can I stay and pay rent for three months in a row? I don't have enough money. Sher Lu said somewhat embarrassed. Most of the money given to him by the dean was saved by Sher Lu, and he only kept a small portion of his living expenses. Of course you can, child. Aunt Liang readily agreed, I'll give you a cheaper price, and auntie won't charge you for water and electricity. You can stay here with peace of mind. She then handed the room key to Sher Lesho. Sher Lu was somewhat moved. In his opinion, Aunt Liang did not seem very wealthy, but after learning about Sher Li's situation, she helped him to the maximum extent possible. This kind of stranger's help made Sher Lu feel warm. Sher Lu carried her small luggage and went upstairs alone. Aunt Liang said that her legs and feet were not good and she didn't keep up. Instead, she kept loudly instructing her downstairs to tell her what was missing in the room in a timely manner. Sherlo opened his room with the key, and a refreshing aroma wafted into his nostrils. As far as he could see, although there was only one bedroom, all the furniture in the room was neatly arranged. Although many of them were old objects from the last century, it was obvious that the room was frequently cleaned, and the bathroom and bathroom were separate small compartments, which made Sherlo very satisfied. It looks good. Sherlo secretly felt fortunate to have found such a cheap and comfortable house. After tidying up and organizing, Sherlo Jing rushed straight towards the small compartment and took a comfortable shower. After camping on the street for a week, Sherlo naturally didn't have a chance to take a shower, and the weather is still hot and humid. He has been sleeping on the park bench for a long time and has been dirty due to sweating. A cold water bath made him feel refreshed and refreshed. Feeling comfortable all over, Sherlo took out some warm steamed buns and ate them while scrolling through job postings with his old smartphone. Convenience store night shift attendants are required to be over 20 years old. Logistics station night movers are required to be over 18 years old. Not enough age. Sherlo muttered softly as she looked at the job posting on her phone. He just celebrated his 17th birthday last month, and according to the age requirements in the job posting on his phone, he has to wait for at least another year. How about living with the money given to me by the dean for a year for now, and then looking for a job? Sherlo thought to himself. No, 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 Sherlo shook his head and dispelled the thought. The dean instructed me that this money should be reserved for me to go to college and I must not spend it recklessly. Do you want to work as a black laborer? According to the uncles and aunties of social workers, many unscrupulous bosses will hire minors, 
but most of them will cut their wages. So what should we do? Just as Lo was lost in thought, suddenly a burst of music came from the next door. The initial melody of the music is melodious, and with the slow tremolo of the prelude, each note jumps and flips, showing a lively and beautiful beauty. Sher Lu has heard this piece in music class, which is known as the Second National Anthem of Austria. The Blue Danube Waltz. But for him as a music idiot, listening to such lofty tunes is somewhat like savoring fine bran like a mountain pig. But he still remembered this song because it sounds really nice. Yes, with the few artistic cells in Shirley's mind, he can only evaluate the word pleasant. I don't know why, but Shirley suddenly had an impulse to see who played this song. Just like a visit from a new neighbor, Shirley thought. Immediately, he put on his clothes and walked out of his room. The origin of the song was in the neighboring room, and Shirley stood in front of the door, tapping lightly. Hello, I just moved in today and would like to make a bold visit. Please don't. Shirlo mustered up his courage and knocked on the door, shouting loudly. He doesn't have many friends except for his friends in the welfare institution, and he is always bullied and bullied at school. He is always silent, but I don't know if it's because of this song's attraction. This is his first time actively wanting to communicate with people. Before the words, mind, could be finished, the door was suddenly pushed open and a girl in a white long dress walked out. There are beautiful women in the North who are unparalleled and independent. The beauty depicted in the textbook seems to have actually appeared in reality, with the fair skin of the girl and the spotless white dress on her body blending together, blurring the boundaries for a moment. Her face is as beautiful as a fairy in Western legends. At this moment, the Blue Danube waltz slowly came from inside the room and had already reached the first small waltz. The lively and lively music reflected the girl's face, like a spring breeze brushing her face. In that moment, Sherlo felt a bit unreal. Can anyone really be so beautiful? Looking at Sherlo, who was dull, the girl's eyes flashed a hint of surprise, but soon turned into a cold one. Is there anything wrong? The girl's tone was as cold as before. Sherlo felt his loss of composure and immediately bowed slightly. Hello, I just moved in today and only learned about someone next door when I heard the music you played. I came specifically to visit. You shouldn't be here. The girl interrupted Sher Lee's words with a displeased expression. I advise you to move out as soon as possible. Sher Lu was a bit confused, and the girl's attitude left him somewhat at a loss. No. I didn't mean anything, I just wanted to visit. Sherlo panicked and explained. I thought to myself that this girl wouldn't imagine herself as a pervert or something like that. I warn you, hurry up. Move. And leave. The girl paused word by word and then slammed the door shut, leaving only Sherlo, who was still flustered outside. The blue Danube waltz came to an abrupt end. Lying on the bed in the rented house, Sherlo tossed and turned, unable to sleep. He couldn't figure out where he had offended that beautiful girl. Is it because I didn't knock on the door? No, 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 Sherlo remembers clearly that he had knocked on the door. Or did you offend her by speaking on your own? Not really. Sherlo couldn't figure it out. After Sherlo returned to his room, there was no more sound from the next door, not a single sound. This made Sherlo unable to understand why he was being treated in such a friendly manner. Moreover, what does it mean that I shouldn't be here? Let me move out. I finally found such a cheap house. Sherlo couldn't understand and decided not to think about it. He rolled over and covered his head with a blanket, forcing himself to sleep. Dong dong dong. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, which startled Sherlo. Is it? Knocking on the door. Sher Lu is not quite sure. Dong dong dong. A louder knocking came at the door. This time, it's confirmed that it's just a knock on the door, and it's the door of my own room. But who would knock on the door so late? I just moved in on the first day, is it Aunt Liang? 
Who is it? Sherlock asked loudly. There was no response, and there was only a deathly silence outside the door. Sherlock put on his clothes, got up from the bed, walked to the door, and opened it. A burst of humid and hot air immediately enveloped Shirley's whole body, leaving no one outside the house. Sherlock leaned out and scanned the hallway outside, still unable to see a single shadow. Perhaps it was the wind blowing, or a prank from other neighbors, Sherlock comforted herself. But then something that made Shirley's hair stand on end happened. Another round of thumping thud 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 came from inside Shirley's room. I don't know. Sherlock didn't dare to turn back, and by now his forehead was covered in beads of sweat. When at the welfare institution, social workers sometimes scare the children with ghost stories, telling them about Qing dynasty zombies, Egyptian pharaoh's curses, and martial arts sorcerers summoning souls. Every time, they can scare these children so much that they dare not go to the bathroom alone, including Sherlock. But when it comes to whether Sherlock believes in ghosts in the world, the answer is no. Sherlock believed that it was just a story, and a story is ultimately a story. Moreover, Sherlock is a humanities student, and the world depicted in political books is materialistic. Sherlock also considers himself a staunch materialist. But at this moment, Sherlock felt like he wasn't as determined anymore. Dong dong dong. Dong dong dong. The knocking on the door kept coming from the room, becoming increasingly dense and coherent. Sherlock felt like he was going crazy, with beads of sweat as big as beans sliding down his cheeks. He didn't dare to turn back or think about what was behind him. Suddenly, the sound of thump 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 Thursday. Is it over? Sherlo muttered trembling. Dong dong. A louder voice rang in Shirley's ear. Ah. Sherlo was frightened by the sudden sound in his ear and shouted out suddenly turning back to look back. In the moment of looking back, Sherlock couldn't cry out. Because a blood-red rope was now hanging from the ceiling, and the other end of the rope was tightly wrapped around Shirley's neck. Sherlock wanted to shout for help loudly, but the rope suddenly tightened, making him unable to make any sound. Immediately after, the blood-red rope pulled Sherlock into mid-air, and a strong sense of suffocation and tearing of his neck filled his entire body. Sherlock let out a whimpering sound in his mouth, his body constantly twisting in mid-air, and his hands vigorously tearing at the blood-red rope tightly wrapped around his neck. However, the harder he struggled, the tighter the rope became. I don't want to die, help me. Whoever it is, help me. Sherlock called out from the bottom of his heart, everyone is good. Help me. But ultimately, no one came to save him, and Shirley's struggle became smaller and smaller. Slowly, his hands hung down. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Blue Potion You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ah! Shirley exclaimed and sat up from the bed, panting heavily. Dreaming. As his gaze gradually became clearer, Shirley looked at his hands in disbelief. Although the feeling of suffocation just now was so real, I still vividly remember the feeling of powerlessness that I desperately wanted to break free but couldn't break free no matter how hard I tried. Sherlock turned to touch his own body, except for being soaked in sweat, there was no abnormality. Perhaps it was really a dream. Sherlock thought to herself. At this moment, Sherlock seemed to have thought of something and quickly grabbed his outdated smartphone, glanced at time, and then breathed a long sigh of relief. Fortunately, it was only 6.30 in the morning and he didn't want to be late because of this strange dream. After all, because he didn't know when he fell asleep, Sherlock didn't set the alarm clock as usual. If he overslept and was late, Xing Jiala and his team would definitely make a fuss about it and make things difficult for him. Sherlock put on his clothes and walked leisurely to the small compartment to wash up. Last night's eerie dream made his head feel a bit swollen. 
Shirlo shook his head vigorously and then plunged into the sink filled with cold water, hoping to clear his mind in this way. Accompanied by the stimulation of cold water, Shirlo couldn't help but shiver. A hint of chill rushed into his brain, taking away the heat of late summer and the swelling and pain in his head. This comfortable feeling also took away the haze left by last night's eerie dream. After washing up, Shirlo looked at himself in the mirror with a somewhat haggard face. It was probably because he didn't rest well in his dreams, but fortunately, this kind of thing couldn't happen every day. Moreover, although the single bed in this rented house was old, it was at least comfortable to lie on, soft and comfortable. Compared to the unpleasant experience of sleeping on a park bench, Shirlo was already very satisfied. Today, you must find a suitable job. Come on. Shirlo secretly cheered on himself, wiped away the water stains on his face, and turned around and walked out of the small compartment. But what he didn't know was that there was a faint purple-red strangulation mark on the back of his neck in the mirror, and the position of that strangulation mark was exactly the same as the blood-red rope that held his neck in the dream last night. Shaola, go to school. Carrying his backpack and going downstairs, Shirlo suddenly heard someone calling out to him. Following the sound, Liang Yi smiled and waved at him at the staircase entrance. Yes, Aunt Liang, good morning, Shirlo responded politely. Have you eaten yet? No, Aunt Liang, I'm not used to having breakfast. In fact, it's not customary to have breakfast, but Shirlo is concerned about his own living expenses. He hasn't found a part-time job yet, so he decided to save as much as possible. Not having breakfast means he's just hungry. Once he gets used to it, he'll be fine. Aunt Kuliang didn't seem to think so and said seriously, Nonsense, you're growing up right now. How about not eating well? Look at how thin you are, come on. Aunt Liang took out a bottle of milk from her oily apron pocket and handed it to Sherlo, then regained her smiling expression. It's too late to cook for you. Here's this bottle of milk for you to drink on the way. Ah, how embarrassed. Sher Lu instinctively refused. Aunt Kuliang insisted on stuffing the bottle of milk into Sher Li's hand. This is a free order from the street community. There is a dedicated person to deliver it every morning, one bottle a day. I'm getting older and don't need so much nutrition. I'll tell the milkman tomorrow that it will be delivered to your mailbox in the future. Take this bottle and drink it today. Shirlo wanted to refuse again, but Aunt Liang instructed, Go to school quickly, don't be late. Aunt Liang's kindness made Sher Li's eyes turn red. Since he moved out of the welfare home, he has never felt this warmth again. Looking at Aunt Liang, who was smiling in front of him, the appearance of the director of the welfare home and those social workers unconsciously appeared in front of him. A bottle of milk makes you cry. Humph. A cold female voice came in. Sherlo noticed his own loss of composure, rubbed his eyes vigorously, and turned his head to look at the source of the sound. It was the beautiful girl next door, and to Shirley's surprise, she was wearing the same school uniform as Sherlo at Heisher No. 1 Middle School. It's Xiaoyu. Coincidentally, you and Xiaola are from the same school, so we can be companions when we go to school, Aunt Liang said to the beautiful girl with a smile. The girl named Xiaoyu didn't say anything to Aunt Liang, but walked straight between Shirlu and Aunt Liang without even turning her head. Aunt Liang seemed a bit embarrassed when she saw Shirlu, and quickly explained with a smile, her name is Lan Yu. It seems that you should have met her yesterday. She came here a month earlier than you, and her temper is a bit strange. Don't mind. Shirlo didn't mind, just a little curious. Except for his school uniform, everything else on Lan Yu's body didn't look cheap at all. The necklace around his neck, the watch on his wrist, and even the backpack on his back didn't seem affordable for people living in such a tube-shaped building. However, Shirlo didn't think much about it. Maybe this girl named Lan Yu is the young lady who ran away from home. After thanking Aunt Liang for her milk again, Shirlo also walked out. Before arriving at the East Suburb Station sign, the bus had not yet arrived, and there were already many people waiting under the sign, 
including Lan Yu. Shi Le didn't dare to get too close to Lan Yu. He was really afraid of this quirky girl. Ko Lan Yu suddenly walked straight toward Shi Lu, his tone still cold, and said to Shi Lu, Give me the milk. Ah. Shi Lu was taken aback by Lan Yu's sudden words. Give me the milk. Looking at Shi Li's stunned expression, Lan Yu repeated his words again, with a hint of impatience in his tone. Oh. Shi Lu didn't know why, but he didn't dare to say anything. He quickly took out the milk that had just been put in his backpack and handed it over. Lan Yu took the milk, placed it in his hand, and then walked to the garbage bin next to the bus stop. He casually threw the entire unopened bottle of milk into it. What are you doing? Shi Lu exclaimed with some heartache, Do you know that waste is shameful? But Lan Yu didn't answer the question. When will you move out? Shi Lu was taken aback for a moment and then whispered, I paid for it. If you want me to move out, you'll have to wait until I finish living here for a month. At this moment, the bus arrived at the station, and the waiting crowd began to crowd it with each other, making the surrounding environment somewhat noisy. Shi Lu seemed to hear Lan Yu say, You ignorant guy. But this sentence quickly drowned out in the noise of the crowd. Shi Lu awkwardly scratched his head and boarded the bus with the crowd. From that day on, Lan Yu never said a word to Shi Lu again. The two still took the same bus to school, but they were like strangers to each other. It's not that Lan Yu didn't bother with him anymore, but that he found a good part dot time job. Going to the convenience store next to the school every day after school to work as a cashier. 3 hours, 20 yuan per hour, the seemingly small salary greatly satisfied Shi Lu, a poor student. Of course, he also completed his work very well, so the convenience store owner even took extra care of him for dinner. Although it was just a fast food in the convenience store, it still made Shi Lu extremely happy. And the days of part dot time work and study passed by day by day. Ah. Shi Lu woke up again with a startle. What's going on? This is already the fifth consecutive day of nightmares. Shi Lu muttered to herself, but her voice seemed weak and powerless. It was the same nightmare, with the blood red rope tightly gripping Shi Li's neck. The suffocating sensation made his consciousness blurry, and when he completely lost consciousness, he would wake up from bed sweating profusely. The nightmare he had on the night he just moved into the rental house was the same dream again, and this dream lasted for five consecutive nights. Shirlo also found a purple red scar on his neck, which made him afraid. He wondered if the house was really not clean. But he once again denied his idea, and Shirlo still refused to believe that there were ghosts in this world. Even if there is one, what reason does a ghost have to harm itself if they have no grievances or enmities with it? Finally, Shi Lu was just comforting himself. Perhaps it was the first time he had that dream that he was scared, coupled with the recent exhaustion from school and work, that's why he started dreaming of the same scene again. As for the strangulation marks on the back of the neck, it's probably caused by sleeping dishonestly. After getting dressed and washing up, Shi Lu carried his backpack as usual and went out, taking out the milk from the mailbox at the door. Aunt Liang also kept her promise and really transferred her daily milk to Shile's mailbox, ensuring that Shile had fresh milk to drink every morning. Speaking of which, the quality of this milk is also quite high. After tasting it once, Shi Lu was conquered by its taste. It's not that Shile has never tasted good milk before. In the past, there were kind-hearted people from society who would send some high-end dairy products to welfare homes. However, compared to those high-end goods with gorgeous packaging, the milk with only one glass bottle on the outer packaging has a particularly good taste, rich and mellow, with a sweet taste, and the taste is like melting ice cream. Shi Lu took out the milk from his mailbox, but unlike usual, there was still something in his mailbox today. What is this? Shi Lu looked puzzled and took out the things from the mailbox, which turned out to be a small box from Jifeng Express. Jifeng Express is a very professional express delivery company, known as the fastest and safest express delivery. 
Although the express delivery price is relatively high, its speed and safety have always been unmatched in the industry, so it has a very good reputation. Usually used to transport some expensive items. Shirlo didn't make any online purchases himself, and even if he did, he couldn't bear to choose Jifeng Express. So who exactly does this express box belong to? Shirlo immediately thought of Lan Yu next door. With her financial resources, using Jifeng Express should not be a problem, but the address on this express box clearly reads, 404, Old Factory Dormitory Building, Dongjiao Development Community. And this address is exactly the address of Shiles Rental House. Because Jifeng Express needs to ensure customer privacy, the delivery note only includes the recipient's address, and the sender and recipient's names are blurred. Shirlu also doesn't know who sent the package to him. Although I can't figure out why the sender would send me a package, and how they would know their current address, since the delivery note clearly states their address, it shouldn't be wrong. At least in Shiles' understanding, Jifeng Express, known for its speed and safety, wouldn't make such a low-dot-level mistake of sending the wrong place. Since it was for himself, Shirleli naturally opened the express box, and what caught his eye was a cylindrical container. This container is wrapped in silver-white metal at both ends, with transparent glass in the middle. When viewed through the glass, the blue liquid inside the container can be seen. And underneath this container is a piece of paper that reads, Drink it all, unleash your potential. Is this an energy drink? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 River House You are listening at NovelFull.audio The New Business District The largest commercial district in Haishir, located in the busiest commercial area of the city center, with a focus on high.end development and internationalization as its goal, benchmarking against global large commercial centers. It is the most frequently visited place by elites from nearby wealthy areas. On this land, it can be said that every inch of land is worth every penny. Entrepreneurs from all walks of life are throwing money in order to obtain a valuable piece of land here and increase the commercial value of their business. Therefore, the most shops in the entire Huaxin commercial district are luxury luxury goods stores. However, there are always exceptions to everything. At the head of the commercial district in Huaxin Business District, there are over a dozen high-dot-end clothing and jewelry stores of all sizes, and among them, a toy store, called Hawu, appears particularly peculiar. As for how bizarre it is, for example, it's like a VIP teddy dog sandwiched between a pack of wolves. I don't know who the owner of this toy store, called Hawu is, but people who have been to this toy store have expressed concern about the owner's mental state. The toys operated by Hawu Toy Store are very single, only handmade large dolls. It is said that each doll is handmade by the owner and manager of this store. Because it is purely handmade, each doll is expensive. When it comes to the prices of dolls displayed in the River House Showcase, they can range from thousands to tens of thousands. But if you think the dolls in this store can rival big brands like Disney and Barbie, then you are completely wrong. Yes, the doll from the river house is very ugly. As for how ugly it is, please refer to the ghost doll images in various horror movies for yourself at this moment, Shen He, the owner and manager of the Hawu toy store, was anxiously pacing back and forth, muttering words. This month's sales are almost not enough to pay the store rent, and if it continues like this, I should go bankrupt. My craftsmanship is so good, why no one understands how to appreciate it. Is it because the service in the store is not good enough to make customers feel at home? Yes, it must be like this. Yen Yaoxing Shen He stopped pacing and shouted at the young man sweeping the floor outside the store. The young man named Yen Yaoxing responded impatiently, What? Take a look at you, what attitude is this? I'm your boss, the person who pays you, your parents of food and clothing. Shen He's expression was exaggerated, still shouting loudly. Customers are my food and clothing parents, and you are just a tailor with aesthetic issues. Yan Yaoxing didn't get used to Shen He either, so he put on a bad face and retorted at him. Shen He blushed and had a thick neck when Yan Yaoxing scolded him, 
and his voice increased a bit. Do you know why our dolls can't be sold? It's because you put on a bad face every day, scaring the children away. We only sold a few dolls this month, you know. Three. Not even the rent for the store is enough. God, save me, give me a perfect employee with a kind face who won't talk back to me. Shen he crossed his hands in a prayer posture. Oh. Isn't it because the doll you made is too ugly that it can't be sold? After all, from the beginning of the month until now, there have been more than ten customers who have been scared and cried by your doll. Upon hearing Yan Yaoxing's words, Shen he softened like a deflated ball. Yes, although Hawu's sales broke the lowest record this month, things like, crying out loud because the doll is too ugly, broke the highest record. That's because they don't understand how to appreciate. Shen he muttered softly. Cut. Yan Yaoxing rolled his eyes as he looked at Shen he, whose emotions had become low. All right, I have some good news for you. The customer I contacted from out of town yesterday bought over 30 dolls from our store in one go. I have already packed them and sent them over. The money should have already been received. Upon hearing these words, Shen He instantly regained his energy and jumped up to Yan Yaoxing's side, grabbing his hand. Yaoxing, my good Yaoxing, are what you're saying true? Yan Yaoxing withdrew his hand and said with a disdainful expression, Why are you lying to me? Remember to give me a raise. Also, don't look like a dead sissy, it's disgusting enough. Okay, okay, Yao Xing, you're really my lucky general. I'll give you a raise. You can take on this boss's position. Shen He said with a playful smile. Yan Yaoxing glanced at Shen He and then said, This buyer seems to really like the doll you made and is interested in becoming our long dot term customer. Hi. I'll just say it. There are still people who appreciate it. By the way, what does that buyer do? Managing large haunted houses. Silence a deathly silence. Yan Yaoxing seems to be able to smell the frustration on Shen He's body. Suddenly, Shen He sat down on the ground, crying loudly. Is my doll really that ugly? It was actually used as a prop in a haunted house, no. Ding lingling. At this moment, an untimely ringtone rang on the phone. Yours, Yan Yaoxing pointed to Shen He's phone at the cashier and said angrily. This offline boss really makes him feel a bit dizzy. Shen He took his phone and answered the call with a crying voice. It's me. Yaoxing sold my excellent work to a ghost house owner, can I not cry? No matter how important it is, it's not as important as my doll. What? I don't know what was said on the other end of the phone, but the affected expression on Shen He's face disappeared and he became more serious. His voice also became equally serious. Okay, I got it. Don't worry, we'll talk about it when you get back to the store. Shen He hung up the phone with a serious expression on his face. Watching Shen He, who usually doesn't have a proper appearance, suddenly transform like a person, Yan Yaoxing next to him realized that something must have happened and quickly asked, What's wrong? Shen He shook his head and said, I've lost the key. Dot. What? Yan Yaoxing's face also became very ugly. Can I contact my sister now? Yan Yaoxing asked Shen He tentatively. No. Shen He shook his head again, People in the region cannot know about this, even your sister cannot. So. Just wait like this. Shen He furrowed his brows and thought for a moment before ordering, Yao Xing, close the door and notify others to go to the warehouse for a meeting. Understood. Yan Yao Xing agreed as he went to close the door. Something big happened. Shen He sighed. In the convenience store next to Heisher No. 1 Middle School, a tired looking Sher Lu stood in front of the cashier, occasionally yawning. On the side, the convenience store manager looked at Sher Lu as if he was about to fall asleep and came up to ask with concern, What's wrong, Xiao Lu, isn't in a state. Of course, Sher Lu is not in a state of mind. Nightmares that have been going on for several nights have left him feeling confused all day. In addition, 
There is a quiz in class this afternoon, and during the entire lunch break, Sherlo is reviewing knowledge points without getting enough sleep. Now he is extremely eager for a bed, any bed is fine, as long as he can sleep. Maybe I haven't rested well, Sherlo replied as he looked at the store manager's concerned gaze. Is it too tiring to go to school and work? Don't work so hard, just rest when you need to. The body is the capital of revolution. Others may not compete, but they cannot be happy at times. If they don't compete a bit, they will continue to sleep on the bench. Clean up and finish work, go back and rest well, said the store manager. But there's still half an hour left. Shi Lu is very responsible in his work and doesn't want to leave early. Don't worry, I'll take care of the store. There won't be any problem, the store manager chuckled. Today is a special case, and I'll tell the boss that you're fully present. But. Shirlo still wanted to refuse. Don't be so stubborn, be obedient. Here's dinner for you today, and this one. It's refreshing to drink. Don't be in any danger on the way like this. The store manager took out a box of fast food bento and a can of red sheep energy drink from the counter, and handed it to Sherlo. Sherlo thanked while taking the item from the store manager's uncle's hand. Although leaving early is not Shirley's work style, he is too tired. In order to not let himself collapse, he decided to follow the advice of the store manager and immediately go back to bed to rest. After thanking him again, Sherlo took off his work clothes, packed his backpack, and walked out of the convenience store. The store manager looked at Shirley's tired figure as he walked further and further away, and sighed lightly, what a good child. Unfortunately, Fate is not fair. After marveling at Shirley's background, the store manager uncle continued to busy himself with his current work. In order to quickly return to the rental house to rest, Sherlock gritted his teeth and indulged in luxury. He stopped a taxi and explained his destination. Sherlock collapsed in the back seat, opened the red sheep given to him by the store manager, and drank it all in one gulp. But after drinking the whole can of red sheep, Sherlock felt that it was not of much use, and he was still in a state where he was about to fall asleep. It seems that red sheep doesn't have enough energy, Sherlock murmured. Immediately, he thought of the blue energy drink he received in the morning. Yeah, isn't there another thing with an unknown origin? Sherlo dug out the bottle of blue liquid from his backpack. He had been keeping it in his bag all day and didn't drink it. This unidentified substance was too suspicious, and Sherlo didn't have the courage to drink it. But at this point, Sherlo was already tired and his mind was not very clear, so he had no choice but to have the courage to drink and give it a try. Opening one end of the metal cap, Sherlo gritted his teeth and looked up to drink the entire bottle of blue liquid. Surprisingly, this bottle of blue liquid has no taste at all, just like plain water, it is bland and tasteless. This made Sherlo somewhat doubt whether this was actually an energy drink. Is it expired? Is it a new formula? Whatever, it doesn't seem like there's any discomfort after drinking it, Sherlo thought to himself, and his eyelids grew heavier and heavier before slowly closing. Wake up, young man, here we are. The voice of the taxi driver reached Shiles' ears. Sherlo slowly opened his eyes and saw the taxi driver waving in front of him. Ah. It's here. Sherlo muttered to himself while taking out his phone to check the time. It had only been about twenty minutes since he got in the car, which made him marvel at how fast a taxi is. It usually takes at least an hour to take the bus back. However, when he got off the car to pay the bill, Sherlock felt a bit sore. This taxi cost him twenty yuan, which is his one-hour salary. Sherlock Sheen thought to himself, next time, no matter what, I'll still take the bus. Although it's a bit longer, even the night bus only costs two yuan. This 20 yuan is enough for me to take 10 trips. I don't know if it was because I slept for a while or because the energy drink worked. After getting off the car, I felt like I wasn't that tired anymore and my eyelids didn't fight anymore. This inevitably made Sherlo regret spending so much money on taking a taxi. 
he had already known to take a nap on the bus. Thinking and walking, Sherlo returned to the downstairs of the rental house. Shaola, come back so early. Sherlo looked up and saw Aunt Leon waving at him with a smile. Yes, Aunt Leon, I finished work early today, Sherlo replied with a smile. Have you eaten yet? If you haven't eaten yet, come to Aunt Liang's house. Aunt Liang made a lot of delicious food today. Facing Aunt Liang's invitation, Sherlo smiled and refused. No trouble, I brought dinner. Aunt Kuliang grabbed Shirley's arm and said, Don't keep eating fast food, it's not good for your health. I specially prepared a big meal for you today. If you don't come, it won't give Aunt Liang face. Shirley had intended to refuse again, but Aunt Liang forcefully grabbed Shirley's arm and dragged him into her own house. Subsequently, the door of Aunt Liang's house closed. At this moment, the door of room 403 upstairs suddenly opened, and a cold blue feather walked out. She looked down at Aunt Liang's room downstairs, with a hint of killing intent in her eyes. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Black Knife Girl You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the morning, the first ray of sunlight shone into Blue Feather's room. Lon you didn't go to school today. She is waiting for an important express delivery. Although taking a leave of absence due to waiting for the delivery may seem a bit bizarre, this delivery is really too important for Lan Yu. If everything goes smoothly this time, the rating will reach a level. Lan Yu sat on the bed in her room, her usual face as icy as frost, and her expression at this moment was somewhat excited. She took a deep breath and slowly closed her eyes. At this moment, a black mist slowly rose up in Lan Yu's right hand, with strands of black mist entwined in her hand, gradually converging into the shape of a knife. Lan Yu suddenly opened her eyes, her gaze sharp, and a killing intent appeared in her eyes. Her right hand swung forward with the flow. Shua, the black aura dissipated, and a tang sword with an antique design and a dark body appeared in Lan Yu's hand. With the appearance of the black tang dao, the air in the entire room began to distort. At first glance, it seemed as if Lan Yu was being burned by intense fire, and everything around him became blurred. Get up. With a faint moan from Lan Yu, she jumped up from the bed in an inexplicable posture, standing upright and charging straight towards the ceiling of the room. Just as her body was about to touch the ceiling, Lan Yu twisted her waist and flipped her whole body over. With inertia, her feet landed on the ceiling, and then she squatted down. She grabbed the handle of the knife with her right hand and pulled up a beautiful blade flower, making a posture of retracting the blade and sheathing it. Her left hand was tightly pressed against the back of the black tang knife, and she made a posture of pulling out the blade, crouching steadily on the ceiling in a strange posture. I don't know how Mr. Newton, who discovered the law of universal gravitation, would feel when he saw this scene. From jumping up, to collecting knives in the air, to crouching on the ceiling, all kinds of behaviors cannot be completed by normal humans. All of these completely violate the basic laws of mechanics. Break it. Lan Yu let out a soft chuckle once again, and the muscles in his right calf tightened fiercely. His left leg led his left foot to take a big step forward, and his right hand, holding a knife, had bulging veins clearly accumulating strong strength. A large black mist erupted on the body of the black Tang Dao, causing a sudden change in Lan Yu's overall aura. If the usual blue feather is like a cold sculpture, then at this moment she is like a volcano about to erupt, and the sense of oppression that devours everything is truly chilling. Shua. Lan Yu swung his right hand in an instant, but in an instant, the black tang sword tore through the air with the sound of breaking the wind. I couldn't see the trajectory of the black tang sword passing by, only a flash of black blade light could be seen. The space in front of Lan Yu suddenly darkened, and the black blade light seemed to devour all the light. In the darkness, Lan Yu flipped over and jumped off the ceiling, landing steadily on the floor. The black tang knife in her hand had once again turned into a black mist, wrapping around her right hand. As the black tang knife turned into black mist, 
the room became bright again. Kyushu Ancient Saber Technique Waste Strike Technique Lan Yu made improvements on this basis, and this formula is called Black Flash. Sigh. Lan Yu took a long breath and looked at the black mist on his right hand. Guac, I know you also crave to become complete, just like I crave to become stronger. Lan Yu was actually talking to the black mist in his hand. Today, I will help you turn it into a sheathed knife. Buzz. The black mist seemed to be alive, emitting bursts of buzzing, as if responding to blue feather. And now, what we need to do is wait. Lan Yu's right hand trembled, and the black mist disappeared instantly. Just as the black mist disappeared, Lan Yu's phone on the table also rang. Lan Yu picked up his phone and pressed the answer button. Hello, I am a courier from Jifeng Express and have placed the items in the mailbox next to your door as requested. A young man's voice came from the other end of the phone. Okay, let me confirm. After speaking, Lan Yu opened the door to her room, walked to the mailbox, and reached out to probe in. But something unexpected happened. Lan Yu's mailbox was empty, without any so dot called things. Lan Yu was taken aback and asked the courier on the other end of the phone with some confusion, Are you sure you put it in? Sure, according to the shipper's request, I personally placed it in the mailbox of room 404. Why? Wait, you said 404. Lan Yu's expression was somewhat surprised. Yeah, what's the problem with the shipper filling out, 404, Old Factory Dormitory Building, Development Community, Dongjiao District. Dot. The courier on the other end of the phone was clearly a bit confused, with a tone full of confusion. Lan Yu didn't answer, but walked straight to the door of Sher Li's room next door and poked his hand into the mailbox in room 404, which was also empty. Damn it! Lan Yu scolded angrily. Hello. What are you saying? The courier was puzzled by this sudden sentence. Who told you it was in the mailbox, why didn't you just hand it over to me? Lan Yu asked angrily. This. This is what the shipper requested. They said. They don't want to meet with the consignee, they said it's to protect your privacy. So. The courier was clearly frightened by Lan Yu's unfriendly tone, and his speech became somewhat stuttering. At this moment, Lan Yu bit her lower lip with her teeth, and her already fair face turned into an abnormally pale one. Her whole body trembled and she couldn't say a word. Hello. Are you listening? Hello. Do. 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 Lan Yu didn't answer and hung up the phone directly. These arrogant fools are pretending to be smart. Lan Yu never expected that the group of people above would pit himself like this. Calm down, calm down, take a deep breath. As she took a deep breath, Lan Yu's emotions gradually stabilized, but her face remained pale. Immediately, she picked up her phone again and dialed a phone number. Captain. It's me, Lan Yu. Time quickly arrived at night, and Lan Yu upstairs watched as Shirlu entered Aunt Liang's room, thinking back to the captain's instructions. Task priority, as for that boy, whether or not the key is in his hands, keep him. Also, do not wear a mask while carrying out tasks. Lan Yu withdrew her thoughts, turned around and walked into the room, straight to her bed. She bent down and pulled out a large suitcase from under the bed. Lan Yu opened the suitcase and quietly found a black garment and an equally black face mask inside. Aunt Liang, are you all doing this? Shirlu looked incredulously at the dishes on the table in front of him. Braised carp, sweet and sour pork ribs, braised pork trotters, cumin lamb, diced spicy chicken, a few stir-fried seasonal vegetables, and a large bowl of crystal clear white rice with distinct grains. Yeah, don't look at me like Aunt Liang now. When I was young, I was the head chef in the cafeteria of the factory. Whether it was a big pot meal or a leader's small stove, I was in charge. Aunt Liang proudly spoke about the glorious history of her youth. This is too luxurious. And why did you prepare such a sumptuous dinner for me? 
From childhood to adulthood, Shi Lu was able to enjoy such a sumptuous dish at the welfare home during the Chinese New Year. He couldn't understand why Aunt Liang cooked such a large table of dishes to entertain him. It's okay, if you can't finish eating, you can take it back and eat. We don't waste it. Aunt Liang continued to smile, oh my, it's because you've been going to school and working lately, and you're too tired. You only eat fast food every day. How can your body handle this? So, I made some delicious food specifically to help you replenish your body. I, this. Upon hearing Aunt Liang's words, Sherlo felt a bit choked up. Since he moved here, life has been quite difficult for him. It was Aunt Liang who always took care of him, lowered rent, waived water and electricity bills, and even ordered milk for him. Now, he is worried about his health and has prepared such a large table of food for him. At his most helpless moment, it was Aunt Liang's kindness that warmed him, making him feel that he was not a child that no one loved except for the director of the welfare home and the social workers. It also made him feel the warmth of home for the first time after leaving the welfare home. Shirlu really didn't know how to repay Aunt Liang's kindness to him. Aunt Liang, thank you. A thousand words merged into a thank you, not because Shirlu was clumsy, but because he didn't know what language to use to express gratitude to Aunt Liang. He wanted to say too much, but when it came to his mouth, he didn't know how to say it. No fancy words can express Shirley's gratitude at this moment, only a simple, thank you. Shirlove expressed her gratitude to Aunt Liang in the most simple way. What are you saying, thank you, kid? Don't be polite. Try it while it's hot and see if Aunt Liang's dishes match your taste. Although she spoke, Aunt Liang's smile became even brighter. That's all for now. If Shir Lu were to be polite with Aunt Liang again, it would appear a bit artificial. He didn't say anything and picked up his chopsticks and started. Eat well, Aunt Liang. Your craftsmanship is really good. Shir Lu stuffed his mouth full of food and said vaguely. If it's delicious, eat more. If you like it, Aunt Liang will let you try my craft more in the future. Okay. Aunt Liang's craftsmanship is really good. The dishes on the table are all in color, aroma, and taste. At this point, Sherlo couldn't care about anything else and wolfed down the food. But just then, with a loud bang, Aunt Liang's door was kicked open in a very violent way. Sherlo and Aunt Liang were both surprised and quickly looked towards the door. Standing at the door was Lan Yu. At this moment, Lan Yu was dressed in black functional attire, wearing Martin boots of the same color, and even her long hair was tied up in a high ponytail. Compared to her usual fresh dress with hair draped over her skirt, dressed in this way, coupled with her iconic cold expression, she looks full of heroism. Xiao Yu. Aunt Liang opened her mouth wide and looked shocked. Shi Lu also opened his mouth wide, he didn't understand which song Lan Yu was singing. And he clearly remembers that Aunt Liang locked the door when she entered. How could a weak-looking little girl kick the locked door open with just one foot? Does Lan Yu have such great strength? What are you doing, Lan Yu? Sherlo stood up and asked loudly. Lan Yu didn't speak, just looked at Sherlo coldly, which made Sherlo, who was already afraid of her, feel a little uneasy. But then, Sherlo was not as simple as having a hair on his heart. Because Shi Lu saw a black mist rising from Lan Yu's right hand, and as Lan Yu's right hand shook, the black mist dissipated. In Lan Yu's hand, a black tang sword suddenly appeared. Immediately after, Lan Yu's figure flashed and he charged straight towards Ant Liang and Shi Lu with his sword. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Heart Demon You are listening at NovelFull.audio I saw Lan Yu charging towards him with his sword, and Shi Lu instinctively crouched down with his head in his arms. He didn't understand why Lan Yu was facing him with his sword, and it left Shi Lu puzzled as to how the pitch black knife in Lan Yu's hand had transformed. However, these are not important at this time, because Shi Lu no longer has time to think so much. What he needs to think about now is how to survive under the sword of Lan Yu. 
The black knife in Lan Yu's hand was as fast as lightning, cutting straight from top to bottom. At this moment, Shi Lu, whose legs were already weak in fear, clearly couldn't avoid it. Xiao Lu. I only heard Ant Liang shout out, and then Shi Lu flew out diagonally. Originally, just as Lan Yu swung her knife, Ant Liang had already jumped up, flew over and threw Shi Lu to the side, then protected Shi Lu in her arms like an old mother protecting a little chicken. Ant Liang hugged and rolled on the ground several times, until they collided with a wall before the two of them stopped. The continuous rolling made Shi Lu feel like his brain had been stirred into a paste, and his stomach was also in turmoil, making him want to vomit. At this time, Aunt Liang was not doing much better because she had protected Shi Lu in her arms before the two collided with the wall. Although she was short and couldn't fully protect Shi Lu, she still withstood most of the impact force for Shi Lu when the two collided with the wall. Shi Lu was just a bit dizzy and disoriented, and she herself was now unable to stand up due to the strong impact. Aunt Liang Shi Lu felt that Aunt Liang seemed to be seriously injured, so he quickly broke free from her arms and stood up to look at the benefactor who was protecting him at the critical moment. Aunt Liang's face was full of pain at this moment, and her entire face was twisted, but she kept muttering, Run! Xiaola! Run! Of course, Shi Lu cannot run. If he does, who knows what this crazy woman like Lan Yu will do to Aunt Liang. Lan Yu's knife was full of force. Although it did not strike at Luan Liang Yi, it directly split Liang Yi's dining table in half, and all the dishes on the table were knocked to the ground. Without hitting the target, Lan Yu frowned and then swung his second sword at the two of them who had no way out. The black knife slashed horizontally, but the speed was still too fast to be captured with the naked eye. Don't. Shi Lu suddenly let out a loud cry, stood up, raised his arms flat, and stopped between Lan Yu and Ant Liang. He is trying to defend Ant Liang against this blow. Is it because Shi Lu is brave? Of course not, he is human, and he would be afraid of death if he were human. But he really doesn't want to see Ant Liang die in front of him, even if he cannot escape misfortune. However, he still chooses to take the knife for Ant Liang at the moment, even if it will take his life, he will also block it for her. Shi Lu tightly closed her eyes, her body trembling uncontrollably due to extreme fear, and her legs were like chaff, unable to stand still. Those who will die, they will definitely die. Having witnessed the power of Lan Yu's knife to cut open the dining table, Shi Lu knew that he was in dire straits this time. Unexpectedly, he was not yet an adult and had a lot of time to go by. His life was about to be ended by a crazy woman wielding a knife. The blade roared with the piercing sound of the wind, and Shi Lu knew that he was really dead. The imagined death did not come, and what came towards him was not the blade in Lan Yu's hand, but a powerful and heavy sweep from Lan Yu. Originally, Lan Yu saw Shi Lu blocking in front of her. During the slashing process, he suddenly withdrew his sword and used force to twist his body, like a ballet dancer. With his right leg as the axis, his left leg drew a beautiful arc and kicked Shi Lu hard in the waist. And what this sweep brought in was the crisp sound of Shiel's ribs breaking and the tragic scene of another oblique flight. Ah! Shi Lu let out a scream, and his whole body briefly floated into the air before falling straight to the ground, at this moment, besides lying on the ground and howling in pain, Shi Lu no longer had the strength to stand up. The excruciating pain of his rib fracture made his body constantly twitch, and beads of sweat filled his forehead. An eye dot catching guy. Lan Yu looked at Shi Lu, who was lying on the ground howling in agony, with a hint of disgust and disdain in his eyes. Next, it's your turn. Lan Yu flipped her wrist and drew a circle in the black tang knife in her hand. The back of the knife pressed tightly against her right arm, followed by a horizontal slash, with the blade cutting straight at Ant Liang's lifeline. Ant Liang, who fell to the ground, had nowhere to avoid. Shit! The sound of the blade cutting through the human body came, and a red line slowly appeared on Ant Liang's neck. Then, in Ant Liang's frightened expression, 
the red line gradually became apparent until the bright red blood sprayed out, and Aunt Liang's head slowly fell down, rolling down in front of Sher Lu. Lan Yu's face was cold, even though Aunt Liang's blood sprayed on her body, Lan Yu still stared at Aunt Liang's body tightly, and his killing intent in his eyes did not diminish at all. Sher Lu widened his eyes, and the human head stopped rolling less than half a meter in front of him. Aunt Liang's frightened expression remained fixed on her face before her death, her eyes fixed on Sher Lu. No. Sher Lu screamed in pain, holding back the pain and supporting his body, slowly crawling towards the bloody head. Why? Why? Sher Lu cried and shouted. He didn't understand what Aunt Liang had done wrong, why such a kind, gentle talking, and always smiling person died inexplicably and turned into a cold corpse. Ah! Sher Lu roared at the top of his lungs and used all his strength to get up from the ground. Then he turned his head and looked at Lan Yu with both eyes. Crazy. You crazy. Sher Lu muttered, his legs moving step by step, and slowly walked towards Lan Yu. At this moment, Sher Lu had no fear in his heart, only pain and endless anger. He wanted to kill this crazy woman and avenge Aunt Liang. Even if it's death, he still wants to pull blue feather on his back. But Lan Yu tilted his head and looked at Sher Lu with a mocking expression. Angry. For your dear Aunt Liang. Lan Yu's words were also filled with a hint of mockery. Immediately after, without waiting for Sher Lu to answer, there was a powerful and heavy kick, and Lan Yu kicked Sher Lu directly in the stomach. Obviously, this kick was particularly forceful, and Sher Lu, who was kicked, flew backwards. After landing, he rolled several times in a row, so much so that he rolled directly from inside to outside. At this moment, Sher Lu was completely unable to get up, and he could only lie on the ground, constantly cursing at Lan Yu, his whole body wrapped in excruciating pain. Lan Yu didn't look at Sher Lu who was cursing anymore, but instead turned his head to look at Aunt Liang's headless body. All right, you can't get your prey anymore. Now, you have become my prey. This sentence was spoken by Lan Yu to the headless corpse. The scene where the murderer had a conversation with the body of the person after killing them was both terrifying and eerie. Do you still want to continue pretending to be dead? Okay. Without further ado, Lan Yu picked up his knife and chopped at Aunt Liang's body. But at this moment, an even more eerie scene occurred. Faced with the blade of Lan Yu's sword, Aunt Liang's body lifted one hand and blocked the direction of Lan Yu's attack. Dang! The moment the blade touched the arm, a sound of metal collision sounded. Lan Yu's knife was forcefully blocked by the corpse's arm. At this moment, the other arm of the corpse fiercely swept towards Lan Yu's thigh. Upon seeing this, Lan Yu quickly grabbed the wrist of the right hand holding the knife with his left hand, and twisted the black knife 180 degrees with both hands simultaneously, just blocking the other hand of the corpse. Dang! Another crisp sound of metal collision. The force generated by the collision made Lan Yu's right hand numb, almost unable to grasp the handle of the knife. It's truly a dot level, such a powerful force. Lan Yu sighed inwardly. At this moment, Sher Lu, who was still lying on the ground outside, was stunned by the scene before him. He watched helplessly as Aunt Liang's headless body lifted its hand and even blocked the black knife in Lan Yu's hand. You should know that it was a knife that could split open the dining table with one blow. What's even more strange is why the body moved. Sher Lu now has only one thought in his heart. He's haunted. Lan Yu inside the house knew that he couldn't fight hard, so he turned around and wanted to run outside. But the headless corpse didn't give her this opportunity at all. She kicked her legs and grabbed her arm straight towards Lan Yu's back. Just as she was about to grab it, Lan Yu seemed to have eyes growing behind her, tightly gripping the handle of the knife with both hands and making a posture similar to cutting her abdomen. Of course, Lan Yu did not intend to cut his abdomen, but instead fiercely thrust his long knife backwards, with the tip of the knife accurately piercing the hand caught by the headless corpse. 
A huge force was transmitted to his hand along the tip of the knife, and with this force, Lan Yu suddenly jumped up and flew forward out of the room. Then, he did a beautiful forward somersault in the air and landed steadily on the ground outside the house. I should have known earlier, you're a damn demon hunter. Aunt Liang's voice came from inside the room, but at this moment her voice became particularly hoarse as if something had been stuffed into her throat. It's not too late to know now, anyway you're also going to die. A dot level demon, Liang Tun. Lan Yu turned around, his tone full of disdain. Oh. You actually know my name, but just thinking about it, pretending to be a tenant has been observing me for over a month, I must have done some homework. After speaking, Aunt Liang slowly walked out of the room, to be precise, it should be Liang Tun. At this moment, Liang Tun's head and body had been reassembled, and there were no traces of beheading left on his neck. As she approached Blue Feather step by step, her entire body gradually began to change. Her skin lost its vitality and turned into a gray-white color like a dead person. Her palms and fingers twisted unnaturally, and her nails doubled in length. The scariest thing was still Yang Tun's mouth, with the corners of his mouth cracking and extending to his temples. Human teeth kept falling off, and rows of sharp teeth resembling steel needles emerged from his mouth. I finally found a delicious meal, but it was all yellowed out by you little girl. Liang Tun said fiercely as he looked at Lan Yu in front of him. Then he smiled and looked at Shi Lu lying on the ground not far away. Xiao Lu, is the food cooked by Aunt Liang delicious? When Liang Tun spoke, her whole face undulated up and down, because the corners of her mouth were connected to her temples. Her mouth and head were like an open teapot, revealing her black mouth and sharp teeth like steel needles. Watching Liang Tun's terrifying appearance, Shi Lu felt a chill in her heart. Although she didn't know what Liang Tun was, she was definitely not human. Why don't you speak up? Aunt Liang didn't treat you unfairly. She's free of rent, giving you milk, and treating you to dinner. Shouldn't you repay Aunt Liang well? Liang Tun didn't pay any attention to Lan Yu, who had already wielded his sword and was still talking to Shi Lu. Since I tasted Aunt Liang's food as a reward, then. Liang Tun paused for a moment, and his voice suddenly became particularly sharp. Let Aunt Liang also taste you. After speaking, Liang Tun rushed toward Shi Lu, who was lying on the ground, at an extremely fast speed. No way. Lan Yu kicked his right foot on the ground, jumping out like a sharp arrow from a bow. The black tang sword in his hand was filled with black mist, and the blade shone with black light, slashing towards Liang Tun. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Hunting and Killing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lan Yu was very fast, and the black tang dao in his hand cut straight at Liang Tun. At this moment, Ku Liang Tuan only had Shi Lu in her eyes as a delicacy. She did not dodge Lan Yu's attack at all, and did not even make a defensive posture. Dang! The sound of the combination of gold and iron rang out, and Lan Yu struck Liang Tun heavily on the shoulder, preventing her from approaching Shi Lu. The blade broke through the clothes on Liang Tun's shoulder, but that's all. He couldn't penetrate half an inch further. Not enough strength, demon hunters. Liang Tun, seeing that he had no chance to eat it, turned his head to look at Lan Yu, who was holding a black knife and had a cold and murderous expression on his face. Seeing that his attack was not effective, Lan Yu held the knife in both hands again, pulled it horizontally, and the blade turned towards Liang Tun's neck. Liang Tun still had no intention of avoiding, so he let the blade pass through his neck. A piercing metal friction sound sounded, and the blade scraped across Liang Tun's neck, bringing out a string of sparks. Lan Yu didn't stop much, lifted his left leg and kicked onto Liang Tun's lower abdomen. With the help of reaction force, he jumped back and made a backflip to widen the distance between himself and Liang Tun. Is there no one left in the Demon Hunter Guild? It's ridiculous to send a small character like you to hunt me down. Liang Tun couldn't help but burst out laughing when he saw that Lan Yu's attacks had failed several times. 
In her opinion, the demon hunter Lan Yu sent by the demon hunting guild was nothing more than that. Lan Yu remained silent, his face still carrying a cold murderous intent. Although there was nothing to say, the black tang sword in Lan Yu's hand emitted a buzzing sound, and the black mist on the blade accumulated more and more, constantly eroding the surrounding air. The black mist continued to erode and diffuse, quickly filling the entire blade, and even gradually spreading to Lan Yu's right arm holding the knife. Are you serious? Liang Tun watched with great interest as the black knife in Lan Yu's hand changed. She still didn't see Lan Yu as a threat, but was curious about what this weak demon hunter would do. In her eyes, everything was just a monkey show for her entertainment. In her opinion, the girl holding the black knife couldn't hurt her at all, and this was her confidence as an A.-level demon. Just as she was observing what Lan Yu was going to do, his figure disappeared like this. That's right, in Liang Tun's eyes, Lan Yu disappeared in place out of thin air. Just as Liang Tun was surprised, a murderous aura came from behind her, and she quickly turned around to look back. In the afterglow, Liang Tun saw Lan Yu, who had just disappeared, appear behind her by some unknown means. The long sword in his hand, filled with black mist, reached straight at the back of her neck. When? Liang Tun was secretly surprised. Although the black knife in Lan Yu's hand only added more black mist, the feeling it gave Liang Tun was completely different from before. This knife cannot be forcefully cut. This was Liang Tun's thought at this moment. But it was too late to hide, and in a hurry, Liang Tun could only lift his arms to protect himself when he turned around. Ko Lan Yu once again disappeared from Liang Tun's sight. That's right, just like disappearing just now, Lan Yu disappeared instantly like a ghost. Immediately afterwards, severe pain spread from the back of Liang Tun's neck. The blade, shrouded in black mist, accurately slashed at the back of Liang Tun's neck, and this time did not make the sound of the combination of gold and iron. With the strike of blue feather, the blade deeply penetrated into Liang Tun's neck. Ah! Just now, Liang Tun, who was still looking down with confidence on his face, was left with only a scream of pain. Liang Tun didn't sit idly by, waving his hands and grabbing backwards haphazardly. But this chaotic grab didn't even touch Blue Feather's fur, because after a hit, Blue Feather disappeared again as before. The excruciating pain once again came from Liang Tun's waist. This time, Lan Yu appeared on Liang Tun's side, and the black knife in his hand accurately slashed past Liang Tun's waist before disappearing. Disappearing appearing slashing, Lan Yu kept repeating the same action, leaving different wounds on various parts of Liang Tun's body with each slashing. At this moment, Liang Tun realized that he was wrong, and it was a big mistake. How could a demon hunter who dares to hunt down an A.level demon alone be weak? She underestimated the enemy. Due to Liang Tun's disregard for the enemy, she already had more than ten large and small wounds on her body. The final slash hit Liang Tun's leg, and Lan Yu also withdrew his sword and flew back, once again widening the distance between him and Liang Tun. In the final blow, Liang Tun also saw clearly the movements of Lan Yu. Lan Yu did not disappear, but rather moved too fast, so fast that his eyes could not capture his body shape, which caused the illusion of disappearing in place. The technique used by Lan Yu originated from the ancient sword technique of Kyushu Kingdom, known as, listening to the wind slash. By using their own speed, they can quickly strike close to their body, and the enemy can only hear the sound of the wind in their ears, but cannot see the person wielding the sword. This attack technique is extremely physically demanding, and Blue Feather's limit is only 20 consecutive slashes. As a powerful mind demon, Liang Tun's perception ability far exceeds that of ordinary humans. Lan Yu's final strike made her feel the airflow driven by his body's high dot speed movement, which kept circulating around Liang Tun's body. It was actually easy to detect, but because the scene of Lan Yu disappearing was too shocking, Liang Tun did not notice it at first. Damn demon hunters! Ah! Feeling the excruciating pain emanating from all over his body, 
Liyan Swallowing's anger was also burning uncontrollably, cursing at Lan Yu. Lan Yu looked coldly at Liang Tun, whose body was twisted by the excruciating pain, and tightly grasped the black knife in her hand. Although the attack worked, she dared not relax at all. Due to Liang Tun's disregard for the enemy, Lan Yu easily used his speed and the enhanced slash of the black sword, Gua Ke, to damage Liang Tun. Therefore, the success of the previous slash was somewhat due to luck. If Liang Tun did not underestimate the enemy, but instead faced up to the identity of the Blue Feather Demon Hunter, then with the strength of her A.Level Heart Demon, Blue Feather's attack could not be so easily achieved. At this moment, Lan Yu was not feeling well. The continuous rapid movement and slashing made her heart jump wildly like an overheated engine. Lan Yu was panting heavily, knowing that Liang Tun would not give her a chance in the upcoming battle. She would face a full dot scale attack from an A.Level Heart Demon. You're very strong, I admit I underestimated the enemy. Liang swallowed the excruciating pain from his wounds and looked fiercely at Lan Yu, angrily saying, but that's all. You still don't have any chance. After speaking, Liang Tun opened his big mouth full of sharp teeth, and his black mouth turned towards the direction where Lan Yu was. A purple-red bubble condensed in her mouth. Looking at the bubbles in Liang Tun's mouth, Lan Yu felt like a formidable enemy, trying to calm her heart. She tightly grasped the handle of the knife with both hands and placed the crow sparrow in front of her. Ha! Lan Yu thought the purple-red bubble would shoot towards him, but Liang Tun just breathed a sigh. This seemingly dangerous bubble slowly flew out of Liang Tun's mouth and hovered in mid-air. Something's wrong. Lan Yu realized it was not quite right and was about to dodge, but a purple-red bubble hovering in the air suddenly flew towards Lan Yu at a speed no slower than the Lan Yu who had just used the listening to the wind slash. Lan Yu knew that she couldn't let this bubble come into contact with her, but after using listening to the wind slash, her physical strength had not yet recovered, and she couldn't bring her speed back to its peak in the short term. She couldn't avoid this bubble anymore. As a last resort, Lan Yu could only wave his sword to face the flying purple-red bubbles. Since he couldn't avoid them, he used the sharpness of Gua Ke to cut them open. But Lan Yu was wrong. The moment the black knife Gua Ke touched the bubble, it suddenly burst open, and a burst of sound sounded. Then, sound waves drove the surrounding air to vibrate. Like a shockwave exploding in her ear, Lan Yu felt as if her eardrums had been pierced. The sound of the explosion and powerful sound waves penetrated Lan Yu's body, including her brain. All organs in her body began to vibrate with the sound waves, and the intense pain almost made her faint. Since it's a sound wave, it shouldn't last too long. Hold on until this sound wave dissipates. Not far away, Shi Lu, who had been lying on the ground, suddenly shouted at Lan Yu. During the battle between Lan Yu and Liang Tun just now, Shi Lu was always clear-headed. Throughout the entire battle, Shi Lu saw it in his eyes. For this ordinary high school student, this battle was too shocking. Liang Yi, who transformed into an ugly monster, and Lan Yu, who was extremely fast, as well as the crow sparrow, in Lan Yu's hand filled with black mist everything was completely beyond Shi Li's understanding. He knew he had wrongly blamed Lan Yu. Lan Yu's target had always been Liang Yi, whom he regarded as a good person. When Liang Yi was killed, he was so angry that he wanted to seek revenge on him, which made him start blaming himself for a moment. No wonder Lan Yu kept slandering at me, asking me to move out. It turned out he was trying to protect me. Shi Lu thought to himself. In fact, this cannot be blamed on Shi Lu. If anyone encounters such a situation, it is impossible to make a correct judgment. Moreover, Aunt Liang, who did not transform into a monster, is really good to Shi Lu. Even now, it is difficult for Shi Lu to associate the ugly monster in front of her with the smiling Aunt Liang. Shi Lu wanted to help Lan Yu, but he couldn't even withstand Lan Yu's kick. How could he possibly fight against monsters? Until the sound waves generated by the purple-red bubble reached Blue Feather, 
he shook helplessly like a sapling in a hurricane. At this moment, Sherlow remembered that the teacher in physics class had talked about the knowledge of sound wave propagation, where the energy of sound propagation decreases. Hold on. Lan Yu. Sherlow shouted loudly again to remind Lan Yu. Vaguely speaking, upon hearing Sher Li's voice, Lan Yu didn't want to hear this troublesome guy's words. However, at this moment, she couldn't shake off the sound waves generated by the purple-red bubbles and could only carry them on. With the help of willpower, Lan Yu finally endured until the sound wave dissipated, and at this moment, she only felt her internal organs being shattered by the sound wave, causing severe pain to every organ in her body. Cough. Cough cough. Lan Yu coughed violently, and a trace of blood overflowed from the corner of her mouth. She knelt down in pain, relying on the tightly held crow bird in her hand to support her body, before fully collapsing. Looking at the struggling blue feather in front of him, Yang Tun couldn't help but sneer, I thought you could play with me well, but I didn't expect you to be as strong as I imagined. Later, Liang Tun turned to Shile who was lying on the ground on the other side and walked slowly. As he walked, he said, when I eat this boy first, then you, the demon hunter, it's really a daifengshu, salad of assorted fresh vegetables, tonight. How could Lan Yu possibly make Liang Tun achieve her wish? She propped the crow sparrow on the ground and forcefully supported her injured body. You're dreaming. Lan Yu let out a loud shout, and his body erupted with astonishing speed again, charging straight towards Liang Tun. At a distance of less than three meters from Liang Tun, Lan Yu suddenly raised his hand and threw the crow sparrow towards Liang Tun. Liang Tun was surprised that the injured blue feather could still have such a speed, but he was surprised. Liang Tun didn't believe that the blue feather strike at this moment would have any more power, so he raised his hand and grabbed the flying, crow bird. I don't want any weapons anymore, have I given up? Ha ha ha. Liang Tun mocked Lan Yu. But Lan Yu's throw was just a feint, her target was Sher Lo lying on the ground. Taking advantage of Liang Tun's laughter, Lan Yu quickly approached Sher Lo over Liang Tun, then lifted him up and turned his head to run towards the stairs. In three steps, he carried Sher Lu up to the roof of the tube tower. A meaningless resistance. Upon seeing this, Liang Tun mocked Lan Yu and slowly walked up the stairs, holding Lan Yu's crow bird in his hand. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Final Strike You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lan Yu carried Sher Lu and quickly climbed up the rooftop of the tube tower through the stairs. No, you're running outside. Aren't you seeking your own death when you come upstairs? Can you still fly? Sher Lu was not sure why Lan Yu didn't run outside the courtyard of the tube tower, but chose to take him upstairs. You wouldn't have been fooled by the sound waves just now. Before Ku Shile could finish speaking, Lan Yu swung his left hand and slapped him in the face. With a loud bang, a clear red palm print left on Sher Li's face. What are you doing? Sher Lu covered his face and asked Lan Yu with some surprise. This slap was quite heavy, and Sher Lu only felt a buzzing sound in his head. Close your mouth. Lan Yu scolded almost like an order, then threw Sher Lu, who was carrying it on his shoulder, onto the ground next to the rooftop railing. From now on, don't say a word unless you want to die. Lan Yu stared at Sher Lu, who had been thrown to the ground by her, with a fierce gaze in his eyes. Upon hearing these words, Sher Lu quickly closed his mouth. He was now less than a meter away from the railing. If he spoke again, perhaps this crazy woman would throw herself off the stairs in a fit of anger. At this moment, the heavy footsteps echoed into the ears of the two of them. No need to guess, the owner of the footsteps must be Liang Tun. As Liang Tun's footsteps approached, her voice began to ring. Do you want to play the game of eagle catching chicken with me? Sure Lu. Lan Yu. The footsteps were getting closer and closer, and finally, Liang Tun's figure appeared at the entrance of the rooftop. You guys are here. Seeing the two people on the rooftop, 
Liang Tun pretended to be surprised and smiled at them. Her smile didn't matter, all her sharp teeth were showing in her mouth, and her whole mouth was like a blooming cannibal flower, even more unsightly than crying. Shi Lu looked at Liang Tun's terrifying mouth and felt his soul about to fly. He quickly turned his head to one side and didn't look at her. If you enjoy the delicious food, the rooftop is also acceptable for now. Liang Tun looked at the surrounding environment and muttered to himself. Have you said enough? Lan Yu interrupted Liang Tun's self-talk, I can't eat anything tonight, and... Lan Yu stared intently at Liang Tun, his cold eyes seeming to freeze him into an ice sculpture. And you're definitely dead. Upon hearing Lan Yu's threatening words, Liang Tun was not angry either. Instead, he seemed to have heard some big joke and covered his stomach, laughing wildly. Ha ha ha. With you. A useless demon hunter with a weapon in my hands. At this moment, Liang Tun was extremely arrogant. If it had been because she had underestimated the enemy that she was cut by Blue Feather before, then now an injured and unarmed demon hunter and a seriously injured human would not have posed any threat to her. Watching Liang Tun smile as if he had lost his breath, Lan Yu snorted coldly, Humph, who said my weapon is in your hands. I saw Lan Yu extend his right hand and gently wave towards Liang Tun's Gua Kei in his hand. The Gua Kei turned into a black mist and disappeared. Then, Lan Yu's right hand shook, and Gua Kei returned to her hand once again. Liang Tun looked at the crow sparrow that had disappeared from his own hands and returned to Lan Yu's hands, still disdainful. He sneered, Oh, what can we do with weapons? Damn demon hunters. You can give it a try. Damn it. I feel nauseous when I see your stinky mouth. Didn't anyone tell you to brush your teeth on time? Although Lan Yu was injured, her momentum increased instead of decreasing, and she attacked Liang Tun with words. You stinky girl with sharp teeth and sharp mouth, you're looking for death. Liang Tun was obviously angered by Lan Yu's words. She let out a roar and rushed straight towards Lan Yu. I'm hooked. Lan Yu said softly. What she wants is this kind of effect, only when Liang Tun loses his judgment due to anger, can she have a chance to kill Liang Tun. Shi Lu, who was lying on the ground, didn't know what Lan Yu was thinking. He only had one thought in his heart. Crazy, this woman is crazy. Upon seeing Liang Tun rushing towards him, Lan Yu inserted his right hand holding the knife into his left rib and pressed his left hand tightly against the flat back of the Gua Kei knife. He then lowered his body, as if he were a running athlete, and made a stance of pulling out the knife. Immediately after, Lan Yu disappeared before Shi Li's eyes. At this moment, Lan Yu ignored his injured body and used the listening to the wind slash again, increasing his speed to the limit and rushing towards Liang. Liang Tun didn't dare to be careless when he saw Lan Yu's desperate posture. He opened his big mouth full of sharp teeth, and one purple-red bubble after another condensed in the air. Then, no less than ten purple-red bubbles shot out from Liang Tun's mouth and exploded towards Lan Yu. Seeing these rushing bubbles, Lan Yu shouted loudly, entangled. I saw a large amount of black mist burst out from the body of the crow bird in my hand, and these black mist surged up like a pair of big hands, enveloping the blue feather inside. In an instant, Lan Yu's entire body turned black, except for a pair of eyes that were particularly bright against the moonlight. Bang! Lan Yu collided head dot on with a purple-red bubble. This time, she didn't dodge at all, but rushed towards Liang without hesitation. Bang bang bang. One purple-red bubble after another was shattered by blue feather, just like before. At the moment when the purple-red bubble exploded, bursts of explosive sound began, followed by waves of sound waves continuously surging towards Blue Feather's body like ripples in the water. But this time, the resonance driven by sound waves did not seem to have an impact on Blue Feather. Despite being enveloped in the black mist, she still rushed towards Liang at an extreme speed that was difficult to capture with the naked eye. 
Seeing this scene, Liang Tun was a bit panicked. She couldn't understand why her resonance bubble had failed. Those black mist. Those black mist are protecting her. Liang swallowed with a chill in his heart, understanding why Lan Yu was not affected by the sound waves. As expected by Liang Tun, the entanglement used by Blue Feather uses black mist to achieve a protective barrier effect, which to some extent helps Blue Feather absorb damage. Yes, to a certain extent. The bubbles of Liang Swallows do not have no effect on Lan Yu. Although the black mist has blocked most of the damage caused by sound waves, there are still residual waves that transmit into Lan Yu's body. The sound waves that enter her body constantly shake her internal organs and brain, making her feel dizzy and dizzy. Her abdomen is also like a tumultuous river, but she still perseveres. Almost, there's still a short distance left. Five steps, four steps, three steps at this moment, Lan Yu felt her steps were particularly heavy, but as she grew faster, she clearly felt that her legs were almost unable to support her body. Hold on. Two steps Lan Yu's forearm has started to accumulate energy. The last step Lan Yu suddenly stepped forward with his left leg, followed by a strong push on his right leg. His waist, due to the instantaneous force, even his bones made a creaking sound. Black flash. With a loud roar from blue feather, black mist sprayed out from the surface of the crow sparrow. Slash. The crow sparrow in Lan Yu's hand was like a black lightning bolt, and with a chi la sound, it crossed Liang Tun's neck in his shocked expression. With a single slash, Lan Yu exhausted his last bit of strength in his body, and due to inertia, he fell forward at Liang Tun's feet. A mouthful of fresh blood spurted out from Blue Feather's mouth, and the crow sparrow in his hand and the black mist around him gradually dissipated. She is really weak now, not to mention fighting, she doesn't even have the strength to lift her arms. Accurate enough, the power is still a bit lacking. Liang Tun's condition at this time was much better than that of Lan Yu. She was cut in the neck by a crow bird, and even half of her bones were cut off. Although the wound was as big as a bull mouth, and there was still residual black mist constantly eroding the wound, it did not cause fatal injuries. However, the effect of black flashing covered Liang Tun's eyes with a layer of black. The light around her was constantly absorbed by black flashing, and the environment, which was already not very bright, became pitch black under the influence of black flashing. Absorbing light to achieve a blinding effect, an interesting skill. Liang Tun said with some approval, but you're right at my feet now, eating it doesn't require your vision. That's it, Demon Hunter Blue Feather. After speaking, Liang swallowed one hand to cover the wound on his neck, and the other hand grabbed Lan Yu, who was lying on the ground and spitting blood from his mouth. Shu. Suddenly, a gust of wind broke through and Liang's outstretched hand was hit by something. With a loud bang, it burst open, leaving his skin, nails, and bones shattered everywhere. Ah! The pain came from his arm, and Liang Tun turned to cover his remaining limbs with his hand covering his neck, making screams of agony. Who? Who is it? Liang Tun screamed. A trace of fear rose in Liang Tun's heart. She could see nothing now, but relying on her body's perceptual ability, she was convinced that there was only one injured and fallen Sher Lu around her, except for the blue feather at her feet. Is Sher Lu a hidden expert? He has always pretended to be injured and deceived himself, and only now has he shown his abilities. Impossible. Liang Tun immediately denied his idea. Judging from Sher Li's previous performance, he was indeed an ordinary human who could no longer be an ordinary demon hunter. If he had such a powerful attack method, Liang Tun would have been killed by the two of them together long ago. Why should Sher Lu show her this play as a weak enemy? Just as Liang Tun became panicked due to being frightened, Lan Yu on the ground suddenly said weakly, Since you know I am a demon hunter, you should also know that we demon hunters don't easily go out alone. I led you to the rooftop and intentionally angered you, just for this moment. Lan Yu paused and continued, Don't struggle, let me make you understand. 
There is an excellent sniper in our team, and I intentionally led you to the rooftop because it is very open and convenient for him to aim. And in the end, I forcibly used Black Flash to make you blind, which is also creating opportunities for him. You. Go to hell. Lan Yu's eyes were cold, as if looking at a dead person, staring at Liang Tun in front of him. Damn it. I'll kill you first. Lan Yu's words constantly stimulated Liang Tun, which made her furious. Despite everything, she fiercely grabbed Lan Yu with her intact hand, who had fallen to the ground. Even if she dies, she will still pull Blue Feather to cushion her back. Shu. Another sound of breaking the wind came, just as Liang Tun's hand was about to catch Lan Yu, Liang Tun's head suddenly burst open with the sound of breaking the wind, like her hand, being blown to pieces on the ground. Then Liang Tun knelt down on the ground, falling backwards like a puddle of mud. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Death Approaches. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Haishir is a coastal small town located in Bobei Province, adjacent to the capital city of Kyushu Province, 49 cities. But unlike the bustling four or nine cities, Haishir does not have any proud pillar industries, and the tourism industry is not well developed. There are no towering skyscrapers or ancient buildings with cultural heritage, only a slow-paced lifestyle and the unique quietness of small cities. At night, the sea market is particularly quiet, without the extravagant nightlife. The streets are less crowded with pedestrians and vehicles, and even the street lights become dim. The entire city is quiet, as if it has fallen asleep with the residents of the small town under the cover of night. No matter which city it is, there is always one place where the lights are still brightly lit at night, even busier than during the day, and that is the hospital. At this moment, Sher Lu was sitting in the lobby of the emergency room of the First People's Hospital of Haishir, with a somewhat dull expression, recalling what had just happened. Just five minutes after Liang Tun's head was shattered, a man wearing the same functional outfit as Lan Yu anxiously ran up to the rooftop of the tube tower. This person is not very tall, but his body looks very sturdy, with a long box on his back. He should be the sniper in Blue Feather's mouth, but he is wearing a black mask, and Sher Lu did not see his face clearly. The man first examined Lan Yu's injuries and saw that she was seriously injured. He placed the fallen Lan Yu on his shoulder, helped her, and walked downstairs. In front of the rooftop gate, he seemed to have thought of something again. He gently put Lan Yu down from his shoulder, turned around, and walked towards Sher Lu, who was still lying on the ground. He took out a stack of 100 yuan bills from his pocket and stuffed them into Sher Li's pocket, instructing Sher Lu that he had already called an ambulance, and medical staff would come to pick him up later. This money was for his medical expenses, and left a note with his contact information to let him have a problem. Just call yourself. There is one more requirement, tonight's matter must be kept confidential. Sher Lu asked the man what to do with Liang Tun's body. If the doctor saw Sher Lu with a headless body, what hospital would he go to? He would definitely be taken to the hospital first. Men don't need to worry, Liang Tun is not a human. After death, his body will gradually turn into dust, making Sher Lu feel a psychological burden. After finishing these words, the man quickly picked up Blue Feather and left. Leaving behind, Sher Lu lay alone on the rooftop watching the headless beam not far away slowly turn into flying ash and disappear. In no time, as the man had said, an ambulance with red and blue lights stopped downstairs in the tube building. The medical staff on board got off the car and arrived at the rooftop as soon as possible. After confirming their identity, they took Sher Lu to the First People's Hospital in Haishir. Happy on the 21st, happy on the 21st. A nurse walked out of the nurse station in the emergency room, shouting Sher Li's name in her mouth. The nurse's voice pulled back Sher Li's thoughts. Here. Sher Lu hurriedly replied. Has the family arrived? The nurse looked at the documents in her hand and asked without looking up. There are no family members. I am an orphan. When she heard that she wanted to find a family member, 
she felt a bit depressed as an orphan. Ah, sorry. The nurse apologized apologetically to Sher Lu while calling for another nurse. The two of them placed Sher Lu in a wheelchair and pushed her towards the elevator. Nurse sister, what is this for? Sher Lu felt a little flustered. Go to the ward, you have broken three ribs, which are a bit severely misaligned. You need to stay in the hospital for observation. This will definitely require hospitalization, and the doctor will see your condition tomorrow for treatment. The nurse patiently explained to Sher Lu. Hospitalization. I. Upon hearing of hospitalization, Sher Lu began to stutter. He is not worried about the money. The man who took away Lan Yu gave Sher Lu a full 10,000 yuan, which is undoubtedly a huge sum of money for this poor student, Sher Lu. However, simply treating his own injury is probably enough. Kushail's rib pain is unbearable now, and he can't even move. With a gentle movement, the pain under his ribs will increase exponentially. This pain makes him unable to take care of himself at all. What should he do while hospitalized? He is worried about this. The nurse seemed to see Shirley's concerns and smiled, saying, Don't worry, I'll prescribe some painkillers for you later and it won't hurt so much. If it's inconvenient for me, I can find a caregiver for you. Nurse. That's not necessary anymore. As far as Sherlo knows, hiring a caregiver costs a lot of money a day, and he doesn't want to spend the money on it. The nurse refused when she saw Sherlo, but also shrugged her shoulders and did not speak. Two nurses pushed Sherlo to the ward, propped him up and placed him on the hospital bed. Then one of the nurses went out and brought a painkiller and a glass of water. The two instructed Sher Lu to rest well and not to press his injured rib while sleeping before leaving. There were no other patients in the ward, so Sher Lu lay quietly on the bed. He then took out the note from his pocket and pondered for a moment. As if he had made a great decision, he gritted his teeth and took out his phone to dial the number on the note. Hello. Who is that? The phone was quickly answered, and a calm male voice came from the other end of the line. It's me, Sher Lu. Can you come to the hospital? Sher Lu asked awkwardly. The man on the other end of the phone only briefly remained silent before answering, Give me the address. Seeing the man agree to come over, Sher was overjoyed and quickly told him the location of his hospital room. Then, the man hung up the phone with a, um, sound. In less than half an hour, there was a knock on the door of the ward where Sher Lu was located. Then the door opened and a man with a cut in his head, or more precisely, a boy, walked in. This person was the sniper who took Lan Yu away. Is Sher Lu. Let me introduce myself. My name is Bei Fong. At this moment, Bei Fong was not wearing the functional suit he had just worn on the rooftop, but was wearing very casual shorts and short sleeves, and of course, he was not wearing a black face mask. From the sound alone, Sher Lu thought that Bei Fong would be a mature uncle. Unexpectedly, after removing the mask, Bei Fong appeared to be in his twenties, but his face had a sense of perseverance that his peers did not have. Hello. Sher Lu stood up straight and wanted to shake hands with Bei Fong, but the pain in his ribs made him lie down again. Bei Fong waved his hand and gestured for Sher Lu to lie down properly. He casually pulled a stool and sat next to Sher Li's hospital bed. Don't be polite, what can I do for you? Is Lan Yu okay? Sher Lu asked cautiously. I just lost my strength, it's not a big deal. You didn't call me just to ask about Lan Yu's situation, did you, said Bei Fong, his voice still calm. Looking at Bei Fong, who seemed to be easily accessible, Sher Lu no longer felt so reserved and said, I'm not very convenient to move now. It's too expensive to hire a caregiver. I wonder if you could act as my temporary caregiver. Just for this. Upon hearing these words, the north wind was taken aback. Why is it so big? Unexpectedly, he was asked to work as a caregiver, which made Beifong doubt for a moment whether Sher Lu had a brain problem. However, it's possible that this guy was scared by tonight's incident and hasn't recovered yet. 
After all, not everyone is born mentally ill like their own offline team leader. Of course it's not just for this. I just don't know what I should say, just. Sherlo looked at Beifeng's strange expression and hesitated for a moment. Beifeng sighed helplessly and said, Ah, I know you have many questions now, but there are some things you still don't want to know. This doesn't belong to your world, and knowing them won't benefit you or me. Oh. Sherlo listened to Beifeng's words and lowered his head in disappointment. Looking at Sherlo with his head lowered, Beifeng sighed again. But. Sai, your situation is quite special. I can tell you something you can know, after all. North Fong suddenly stopped halfway and lowered his head like Sher Lu. After all, what? Sher Lu asked. It's nothing. Bei Fong shook his head and continued, listen carefully. What I'm going to say next may overturn your understanding. Bei Fong slowly said to Sher Lu on the hospital bed, heart demon. A monster that is generated by negative human emotions and becomes tangible. No one knows how the first heart demon appeared, only that a long, long time ago, there were monsters like heart demons in the world. There are numerous heart demons scattered around the world. It can be said that wherever there are people, there are heart demons. But if it only exists like other creatures, that's not a big deal, but mind demons make a living by preying on humans, especially those with high negative emotions. Since ancient times, heart demons have been preying heavily on humans, even posing a threat to the survival of the human race. This has also made humans aware of the existence of heart demons as natural enemies of humanity in this world. When humans became aware of the existence of the mind demon, they decided to fight against it in order to maintain their own race. At this time, some humans with extraordinary talents and special abilities spontaneously formed a team and began to find ways to hunt down the demons to resist their harm to humans, and these people were called demon hunters. The history of demon hunters is equally long, even dating back to ancient times. The emergence of demon hunters has indeed protected the continuation of the human race to a certain extent, but heart demons are generated by negative emotions of humans, so heart demons cannot be completely killed. The struggle between demon hunters and heart demons has continued to this day. Until today, the struggle between demon hunters and heart demons has lasted for thousands of years. In order to better fight against heart demons, today's demon hunters have formed a huge organization called Demon Hunter Guild, constantly cultivating powerful demon hunters and sending them to the battlefield of hunting heart demons, so. Are you and Lan Yu demon hunters? Sher Lu asked. Bei Feng nodded. Ant Liang, ah no, Liang Tun is a demon in his heart. Sher Lu asked again. Bei Feng nodded again. Sher Li's brain is a bit down, and Bei Feng is right. These pieces of information are indeed enough to overturn Sher Li's cognition. Since heart demons and demon hunters have existed since ancient times, why have I never heard of them, nor have they been written in textbooks? Sher Lu asked Bei Feng inexplicably. This has historical reasons, Bei Feng replied. From the beginning, the actions of demon hunters were transparent, because at that time, people only wanted to eliminate the threat of the heart demon and had no other selfish motives. Later, the number of heart demons decreased sharply under the hunting of demon hunters, and the surviving heart demons no longer dared to openly prey on humans. Human society gradually stabilized, but problems also emerged. Beifong paused and continued, the rulers of humanity began to fear the skilled demon hunters, fearing that they would shake their rule. They ordered the arrest of the demon hunters and their execution for endangering the country. The famous witch hunting movement in medieval Europe aimed at the demon hunters among humans. These activities against the demon hunters dealt a devastating blow to their ranks, with only a small number either fleeing or hiding. Although they were extremely disappointed with the human rulers, the demon hunters still adhered to their beliefs and continued to hunt their demons, only becoming secretive. At this point, the firmness on Beifeng's face became even more apparent, and his eyes became even brighter. After listening, 
Sherlo roughly understood the question in his heart and then asked again, Now that I know all your secrets, are you not afraid? Are you not afraid that I will say it? Upon hearing Sher Li's words, Beifeng's eyes showed an expression between pity and sadness, and he slowly said, I'm sorry, you didn't have this opportunity. Because you're going to die soon. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 The Last Time of Sher Lu You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. What are you saying? Sher Lu looked at Bei Feng with disbelief, thinking he had heard the wrong thing. I said, you're going to die soon, Bei Feng repeated again. Why? Let me tell you, don't mess around. This is a hospital. I, I. Sher Lu confirmed that he had heard correctly, and a chill rushed up his spine and into his brain. At this moment, Sher Lu didn't care about the pain in his ribs and was very panicked, wanting to distance himself from Bei Feng. However, he was lying on the hospital bed, and the entire ward was just so big that he couldn't even hide. According to his understanding, this North Maple is probably the assassin sent by some demon hunting guild, because Sherlu knew the secret of the demon hunter and came to kill him to silence him. Looking at Sherli's extremely panicked expression, Bei Feng retorted, Do you think I will kill you? Sherlu looked frightened and dared not speak up. Thinking back on the rooftop before, Bei Feng used some method to blow Liang Tun's head off. Sherlu couldn't help but swallow saliva. He didn't want to be hit in the head like Liang Tun, and he didn't want to die. Moreover, according to Lan Yu, Bei Feng is a sniper, so it is highly likely that Bei Feng has a gun. He can get a sniper rifle, so it is not a problem to get a handgun. Perhaps at this moment, Bei Feng has a handgun at his waist that can easily end his life. Bei Feng felt somewhat helpless and spread out his hands, indicating that he had no ill intentions. If I want to kill you, will I give you money to see a doctor? Wasn't it good to do it on the rooftop before? Upon hearing these words, Sher Lu also reacted. Yes, if Bei Feng wants to kill Sher Lu and silence him, there is no need to wait until now. It is undoubtedly a better choice on the rooftop. Why do you say I'm dying? Sher Lu asked. Bei Feng didn't answer Sher Li's question and instead asked, Have you ever drank a blue liquid stored in a metal can? Metal cans, blue liquid. Wait. Sherlo instantly remembered the strange energy drink in the mailbox at his doorstep this morning. Are you talking about that energy drink? I drank it, so what's the relationship between it and me dying? Sherlo asked puzzled. I don't know why you think it's an energy drink, but if you drink that thing, you'll die, said Bei Feng with a slightly unpleasant expression on his face, so what is that, poison? Sherlo began to be afraid. If it were really poison and he drank all the remaining drops into his stomach, wouldn't it be really a dead end? Bei Feng shook his head and said, As I mentioned earlier, monster hunters are people who possess a certain ability and talent, and we call them superpowers. In addition to their own training, the abilities of superpowers can also be improved through a drug called the Ki. As the name suggests, this is the key to unlocking the limit of superpowers. The can of blue liquid you drink is the key given to Blue Feather by the Monster Hunter Guild. For us, the key is a supplement to enhance our own abilities, but for ordinary humans, drinking it will lead to death. Sher Lu became more and more frightened as he listened, and when Bei Feng finished speaking, Sher Li's face turned pale. Will you die after drinking? Is there no exception? Sher Lu asked with the last glimmer of hope. No, there have been cases in the past where ordinary humans accidentally ate keys, and all of these people died without exception. Looking at Sher Li's pale face, Bei Feng sighed again. I'm sorry, this was our mistake. I have a card with 50,000 yuan in it. Use this money to do what you want on the last day. According to my superior's instructions, I will accompany you during this period. I'm really sorry. After speaking, Bei Feng took out a bank card and placed it next to Shile's pillow. What do you say to accompany me? It's actually surveillance, Sherlo said with a bitter smile. 
He was not foolish, knowing that the Sodot called companionship was just North Fong and Lanyu, these demon hunters, afraid that Sherlu would reveal anything about them. Don't worry, I won't say anything about you and the demon. I only have one question right now. You say. How much more time do I have? After hesitating for a moment, Bei Feng said, I'm not sure, but based on past situations, humans who accidentally eat keys will die in about a week. Shirlu muttered with a bitter smile, are there still six days left? I didn't expect it to be so short. I'm leaving, please rest well. If your injury doesn't require surgery tomorrow, I'll pick you up and discharge you. Bei Feng instructed Sher Lu and slowly walked out of the ward. He didn't say anything more because he knew what Sher Lu needed now was to calm down and accept it. But Bei Feng did not leave the hospital. Instead, he sat down on the bench opposite Sher Li's ward and stared intently at Sher Li's ward. Bei Feng walked out of the ward, and Sher Lu lay on the hospital bed, looking at the ceiling of the ward with empty eyes. Recalling what had happened today, he couldn't control his emotions anymore and began to sob softly. Shirlu regretted drinking the blue key bottle. If he hadn't consumed it, even if he still faced the battle between the demon hunter and the heart demon, he would have ruined these things and wouldn't have ended up like this. He doesn't want to die yet, he hasn't lived enough yet. He just wants to go to a decent university, find a job with neither high nor low wages, build a happy family, and gradually grow old, living an ordinary life like this. All of these have become extravagant expectations for Sher Lu. All night, Sher Li's pillow was dry and wet, wet and dry. Sleepless all night, Sher Lu stayed up until dawn with his eyes open. Sitting on a bench in the hallway outside the ward, Bei Feng also didn't close his eyes. In fact, Sher Lu was right. Bei Feng came to monitor Sher Lu but this was also a helpless move. In his heart, Bei Feng wanted to save this young man. Even if he couldn't save him, he didn't want this young man to leave with regret. Including medical expenses and the bank card containing 50,000 yuan, it was all from Bei Feng's own pocket. He is a very kind person, and he decided to become a demon hunter for the sake of justice in his heart. Although Shirlu drank the key and had nothing to do with Bei Feng, Bei Feng still harbored guilt. As someone who upheld justice in his heart, he did not want anyone to die so absurdly, so he did not feel well either. During the day, the hospital is even busier, with long queues of people queuing up in the hospital lobby to seek medical treatment. Meanwhile, the doctors and nurses of the hospital arrive earlier to welcome the new day of rescue and recovery. Just fix it with a strap in your situation, remember to take your medicine on time. The doctor who was treating Sher Li's injuries prescribed medication on the computer while instructing Sher Lu. Sher Li's eyes were lifeless and he nodded mechanically. At this point, he had already secured his ribs with a fixed strap. After taking painkillers last night, the broken ribs no longer hurt as much. This morning, he refused to let Bei Feng push him a wheelchair and instead walked to the outpatient clinic to see a doctor. Holding large and small packages of medicine, Sher Lu walked out of the hospital like a zombie. He stiffly opened the plastic bag containing the medicine and threw all the drugs prescribed by the doctor inside, except for painkillers, into the trash can at the hospital entrance. I have less than a week left in my life and no longer need treatment. Apart from leaving painkillers to make myself feel better, Sher Lu has no other thoughts. Where are you going? I'll see you off. Beifeng's voice came from behind. Sherlu didn't look back and said, No need, I'll find a place to live on my own. If you're not confident, you can choose to follow me, but don't be too close to me, so as not to implicate you after I die. Upon hearing Sherli's words, Beifeng felt a sense of unease in his heart, but his expression and tone did not show it. Okay, feel free to contact me if you have anything, I will arrive immediately. After speaking, Bei Feng walked away with the passing crowd. Only Sher Lu stood alone in front of the hospital door, looking up at the sky in a daze, unsure of what he was thinking. After an unknown amount of time, Sher Lu seemed to have made up his mind, 
his eyes suddenly becoming clear from numbness. He then stopped a taxi that he usually didn't want to take, opened the car door, and sat in. Where are you going, little brother? The best hotel in Heischer. Okay. The taxi driver stepped on the gas pedal and the taxi drove out, quickly disappearing into the traffic. Days pass by day by day Beifong stood on the rooftop of a tall building in the city center, with the setting sun shining on his resolute face, creating an orange halo. His eyes were fixed on a luxurious hotel in the distance. Beifong took out his phone and dialed a call. The phone was quickly answered, and a male voice came from the phone. How's that boy doing? The man on the other end of the phone asked lazily. Beifeng's voice remained calm, and he replied, it's still the same. His schedule is very regular. Apart from sleeping in a hotel, he either goes out to play or eats at a high-dot-end restaurant. In recent days, he has almost explored all the places that can be eaten and played in the sea market. This morning, he went to the zoo and the Haiyang Pavilion, had an imperial crab set meal at a business restaurant at noon, played a go-kart in the afternoon, and now he has returned to the hotel. Childhood is quite nourishing, stronger than me. The male voice on the other end of the phone had a hint of envy in his voice. Starting from when he drank the tiki, today is already the sixth day. Keep an eye on him. Once this boy's body starts to react, report back to the team after confirming his death. Yes, Beifong replied and then hung up the phone. At this moment, Shirlo was lying on the big bed of the only star-rated hotel suite in Haishir, playing with the latest, Zhonghua, brand phone in his hand, muttering to himself. The Hongmeng system is indeed very useful, much better than the robot system on my old phone. What would be good to eat later? I have also tried the emperor crab. Let's have a taste of the battle axe steak. As she spoke, Shirlu opened the delivery app on her phone and began selecting her own dinner. These days, Shirlu didn't go to school and extravagantly used the bank card given to him by Beifong. In addition to resting at this star-rated hotel, he also tried everything he wanted to play and eat before, including buying the latest Zhonghua brand phone in his hand, and thoroughly experienced the feeling of being a rich brother. Growing up in a welfare institution, Shir Lu, who was struggling, never imagined that he would one day be so extravagant, even if it was bought with his life. After ordering takeout, Shir Lu opened the giant screen projection in the hotel room and played a movie as usual. He watched it with great interest. In the past few days, he has also watched all the movies he wanted to watch but didn't have the money to buy tickets. Today, he plans to watch all four episodes of the American blockbuster League of Legends. As I was watching with enthusiasm, there was a knocking on the door, and it was Shiles' takeout that arrived. Shirlu opened the door and took the tomahawk steak takeout from the waiter's hand. He sat back on the bed and eagerly opened the takeout box, watching the movie while enjoying it. Plush. Suddenly, Shirlu felt his heart stop beating and the battle axe steak he was chewing on had changed its flavor. His entire mouth was filled with a rusty smell. Realizing something was wrong, Shirlu quickly rushed into the room toilet and came to the toilet. With a, wow, sound, he spat out the steak in his mouth. Not just steak, a stream of bright red blood sprayed out from Shirley's mouth, instantly staining the inside of the toilet red. Did you finally come? Shirlu muttered to herself with a bitter smile. After vomiting, Shirlu trembled and walked out of the toilet. There were still blood stains on the corners of his mouth, and his face was gray and white like a dead person. At this moment, he felt his head slightly dizzy, his legs weak, and he couldn't stand steadily. Shirlu made an effort to walk to the bedside, picked up the newly purchased phone on the bed, and dialed Beifeng's phone. Beifeng. I, it seems like I'm not doing well anymore. Before Bei Fong could speak, Sherlock felt his brain go dizzy and he fell straight backwards end of this chapter.